David Storm looks like he's seen a ghost. But how much can one man take? In 2001, there was an awakening and the entire landscape of Perth, Western Australia would change. There would be a new benchmark in all of Australian wrestling. Tonight, we celebrate 20 years. 20 years of blood. 20 years of sweat. 20 years of tears. More importantly, we celebrate 20 years of explosive pro wrestling. And we celebrate 20 years of reawakening. Tonight, we see the continuation of the longest running tournament in all of Australian professional wrestling. We see two old rivals go back at it to advance in the Invitational Tournament. And tonight, we see two brothers in arms do battle to see who is the better and who can make it to the finals of the Invitational Tournament. Tonight, the explosive Pro Wrestling Coastal Championship is on the line, where our most despised champion finally has to put his money where his mouth is. Tonight, the EPW Tag Team Championships will be on the line, where we see the culmination of a bitter rivalry. Tonight, our undefeated champion, a representation of the 20 years of EPW, will defend his title against a man who has defied all the odds and will try to do the impossible. Tonight, history will be made. Because this is Reawakening 20, and the time is now. This is a singles match set for one ball. Introducing first. My name is Dean Olsen. If you were here, you know how great it was. Tonight, we celebrate EPW. If you missed this match, you missed one hell of a fight. The time is now. We are reawakening 19 main event. From the sold-out Gate One Theatre of the Claremont Showgrounds, EPW Tonight proudly presents Reawakening Monday! Our opening contest, set for one fall, is an eight-person tag team match. The 
Introducing first, Jesse Lambert, Dan Moore, Bobby Marshall, two and a half wrestlers! The date is the 27th of November 2021. This is Explosive Pro Wrestling Reawakening 20. He just said he's going to Adventure World if he wins. Okay, uh, my name is Dean Olsen. Thank you for joining us. My name is Eric Mack, and I'm a bit confused as how Jesse Lambert's going to get to Adventure World at this time, but what a night it's going to be, Mean Dean. It is going to be an absolutely massive night. Not only is it the biggest show of the year, but it's a celebration of all things EPW. Of course, Explosive Pro Wrestling started back in 2001, and to celebrate, we've got a massive show in store for each and every one of you, of course. We are here at the Gate One Theatre at Claremont Showgrounds and can proudly say we are sold out, Eric. We are sold out indeed. And starting off here with two of EPW's longest tenured veterans and, now, and someone who's still finding his way. Interestingly enough, Jesse Lambert wasn't born when Explosive Pro Wrestling first started. You know what? That's actually not that surprising. It's not surprising, but it's just an interesting thing to note. Given Hell the history of the South company Hall that Hall people are alive who went around when they started. From Bruno Naito! No arguments here. I was just more so talking about his mental state and that baby face of his. But one thing that wasn't surprising was this man, Bruno Nitro, in our pre-show today, he won the most improved wrestler. And uh, what a year he's had, finally getting over his gate one hurdle, getting that victory against CJL. He's got his award with him as well. There he is, and the award, the support of the fans, they've really got behind the Brazilian Dynamo this year, and it's hard, hard to blame them. That's right, of course, it was our last show here in October, Mighty Encounters, where Bruno Nitro finally got to defeat CJL. Of course, it looks like there's a little unfinished business between them as well, because the show before that, at Ticket to Madness, Chris J. Lazarus revealed that all this time, he has been El Toro Blanco. Yeah, a long and shocking deception. I mean, he committed to it. Nobody knew. No one was aware of it. And the fact that he was that deep undercover just to get at Bruno Nitro just shows and the length he was And introducing their to. opponents. They are the team of Chris Target and CJL's Cavalcade of Stars, Kaz Jordan, Joel Hagan, and Chris J. Lazara. Yeah, very important note there from announcer Jones Good. This is CJL's Cavalcade of Stars. That's the three, Kaz Jordan, Joel Hagan, and CJL himself. But we caught a glimpse of this meeting that was happening with Chris Target and CJL when Jesse Lambert was asked about how he went at Mighty Encounters. And clearly, CJL has enlisted the services of Chris Target. Don't know how long for, but the so-called King of the Carnies is here to prove a point. Well, the cavalcade of stars looking like it's growing in numbers. And I tell you what, Chris J. Lazarus calls himself the purveyor of potential. There's a hell of a lot of potential in Chris Target. And maybe a little bit of guidance from CJL might be just what he needs to take it to the next level. You have to admit, as much as you may not like how CJL does his business, he has got himself a hell of a cavalcade of stars. Well, if it was a stock, you'd be buying it. Because you're right, business is going in the right direction. And the thing with Chris Target, he's had an accomplished career, a veteran of the West Australian pro wrestling scene, Australian wrestling. And to have him in this cavalcade of stars would just do wonders for CJL and his nefarious plans. But wherever CJL is, he's always ticking it, he's always thinking of something. So I'm just always worried about what's next, because he's got a plan B to Z. Oh, you know he does, but not only is he on managerial duties here tonight, he's actually part of the matchup. We well, can't take away from the fact he's an accomplished wrestler as well. A multiple time tag team champion, one time with his opponent, Bobby Marshall. That is true, the genetically superior team, the GST, had a hell of a run many years ago. Do you remember the era? Oh, mate, I just remember them coming out and thinking the best things in life are free, and nothing, nothing could take away from their unity, but I guess time uh, waits for no man. Well, I'm very keen to see if the uh, the two former tag team partners once upon a time managed to mix it up in this matchup. But I'm excited and this crowd is too. This is Reawakening 20. Once again, thank you for joining us. I hope you've kept on line with all the build-up at EPW Perth on all forms of social media and EPWPerth.com, of course. 
we're on YouTube, we're on Vimeo. Anywhere there's a social media, we are there. We are there and we are happy to have you with us. Didn't take long for this event to, sold out, to sell out. And the bell has rung, the first matchup is underway. Reawakening 20, here we go. Bruno Nitro and CJL starting things off. Well, CJL wants himself a piece of Bruno Nitro. He's going to get it. Oh, no, he, he wants Lambert? He wants Jesse Lambert. He acted like he was going to try and recruit Jesse Lambert in one of these videos we saw online. Well, maybe he's angry because it was a clear plan to ambush Bruno Nitro underground a tunnel, but uh, Jesse Lambert let his uh, mentors know, and here he comes. Can we talk about that meeting in the tunnel? It was a scene like out of a out of a Broadway musical. I thought they were going to break into song. Nonetheless, Jesse Lambert had a knife. I don't know why he had a knife and why it wasn't a safety knife. He, his parents need to do a better job. Sorry, Mrs. Lambert. I mean, don't get me wrong, Dan Moore had a pitchfork, but I think he's a... Is there a legal age for a pitchfork willing? Well, I think Dan is old enough to have harvested his own crops in the past, so... Good call. Oh, and a tag has been made. Bobby Marshall, here we go. Bobby Marshall, Joel Hagen. No one is locked up in this matchup yet, but it looks like the two biggest of each side is going to kick this off. Tell you what, I'm excited. Joel Hagen, the biggest prospect. Bobby Marshall, a man that really needs no introduction. If you know EPW, you know Bobby Marshall. Also, ever since the rise of Joel Hagen, I've wanted to see Marshall and Hagen, but uh, looks like we're going to have to wait a little bit longer as we're playing a game of tagsy doodle over here. What is going on? Okay, Chris Target and Bobby Marshall are going to start things off, I guess. Everyone's energy meters are still full somehow. Here we go, Cordo will tie up, side headlock by Bobby Marshall. We are underway, 20 years in the making. Target hits the deck, and again, Bobby Marshall looking in great shape as always. Oh, and a great boot to the face of Target. Enough of the games, here comes the big boot, and now the scoop slam from the multiple time EPW champion. And in comes his partner, Dan Moore. Two men very unlucky to not to be in the Tag Team Championship match. Oh! And with a great offense like that, the double flapjack. Of course, like you said, Dan Moore is a uh, multi-time EPW Tag Team Champion in the past. You can only imagine, ooh! He'll make himself back in to the Tag Team title picture. Really well done there from Target. Quick elbow drop brings in Kaz, but Lost the momentum there by taunting the crowd, going for that TKO, which could have spelled disaster. Oh, beautiful drop kick there by Kaz Jordan. You want to take a look back at 2021 and talking about the awards that were given out. Kaz Jordan is a man whose star is on the rise. CJL's a purveyor of potential. This man has all the potential and his future looks very bright. Oh, here comes Bobby Whoa. Marshall with the blind tag. Back elbow. The Elbows force. Roll. The force that Bobby Marshall hits you with can set off car alarms. I hope they've moved those cars by now. We can only hope huge power slam there by Marshall, but Joel Hagen, here we go, here we go, Olsen. We're going to see these two behemoths go at it. Oh, oh, blocks the clothesline, does Hagen. Oh, and a clothesline of his own has taken the big Bobby Marshall off his feet. That is no easy thing to do either. Oh, Paul Nelson into the slam. And Bobby reaching for that neck, which uh, we have been told, I mean, not from Bobby himself, because he's a very proud man, but we have been told that there has been a lingering neck issue for Bobby Marshall of late. So, definitely an area of focus. And here we go, the former tag team champion partner, CJL, like a hyena, comes in to pick up scraps. That's right, he does. Like I said, I wanted to see these two shape up at their best. A lot of history between these two competitors here. CJL and Bobby Marshall. Well, CJL joined us on commentary a few events ago when you weren't here, and the little worm was talking about how he believed he did all the work in that tag team, and here's a chance for him to prove it, and he's too busy insulting our fans and letting his little lackeys do the hard work. Smart game plan all aside, but, you know, it's, it's, it's something that a lot of the long-time fans would like to see, but of course he's going to deprive us of that. Meanwhile, Target tags back in Kaz Jordan. Great continuity here from the Cavalcade of Stars and Chris Target, so they've clearly been game planning here. Marshall just taking on everyone, buying himself a little time, he needs to tag out. He's going to do it, Bruno Nitro now, the legal man, springboards his way in. Jordan misses with the clothesline, hits, is a takedown. Crowd come unglued, here we go, oh lovely suplex, almost like Spanish fly variation there. Kaz Jordan's got himself two hands full of hair. Oh, gets kicked in the face for his troubles. 
CJL tags himself in. Well, he hasn't come in yet. He's uh, playing some no, mind games. Hasn't. Oh, Whoa. and Kaz to the outside. Gets up close and personal with his tag team partner. Bruno oh, Nitro. Three's a party. How about that? Wait, Nitro's not done yet. Looks like he's got something else in mind. It's the biggest show of the year. He's the most improved. Wait. Oh, no, Jesse. Way to steal the man's thunder. You've got good enough crowd reactions by yourself, mate. Oh! And really, did we see that going any other way, Olsen? I can't say I did, but wait! Bruno Nitro, with a bit of a boost, goes up and over to the outside! Jesse Lambert with the inadvertent assist, but wait a minute, CJL is the legal man and attacks Jesse from behind. Forever the opportunist is CJL. Never short of a word either. Oh, no, maybe a little shy there, not wanting to do the springboard. Oh, looks like the choice is going to be made for him. Oh, with a helping hand. The assisted puncher. Although not in the way he was maybe hoping. Not at all. Uh, wait, are we, we going to... Two and a half wrestlers going to... Well, they are Jesse's mentor. Maybe they're encouraging him. Oh, oh, down and bob to the outside. Jesse Lambert kind of fell over. He is pretty much the man with the coordination of a baby giraffe. But he's not going to give up just yet, I don't think. I don't think we've ever seen him successfully get to the top rope. Well, here he is climbing up, but I think Joel Hagen's got other plans. Oh, no. Oh. Well, there goes that plan, much to the chagrin of the sold-out Gate 1 Theatre. Wait a minute, what's the big man Hagen thinking now? Surely not! We might not get his uh, deposit back on this venue if he does this. I... He's gonna no. leave a whole Wiley Coyote style. The biggest prospect. This mammoth of a man. Wait a minute. Oh, too much jaw jacking, so he gets his jaw jacked by Bobby. Oh, look out. Now this I do believe because Bobby Marshall is a crazy man. This is a person at many reawakenings past we've seen do insane things as he oh, superplexes Joel Hagen to the outside. Well, if you're not going to go over yourself, Joel, Bobby's going to give you a helping hand. Bobby Marshall is pumped up. I worry for the things that go through Bobby Marshall's brain. Only he could think to suplex the big man himself in that way. And now Joel Hagen with a glazed... Glazed look as the fans are on board with this. Crowd's chanting, this is awesome, and I'm sure we all agree. Bobby Marshall's a man who doesn't think like a sane human being. He has no regard for his own well-being, let oh. alone his opponents. Oh, what? I, what? Oh. Joel Hagen just chokeslammed both. Bobby Marshall and Dan Moore? The strength just to get Bobby up for both Bob and Dan at the same time? Oh no, Jesse. Jesse's about to die. Oh, what a choke slam! Jesse was 20 years old. Meanwhile, Bruno Nitro from the top, he's caught! Oh no. Massive choke slam! Joel Hagen has single-handedly wiped out the competition. Those choke slams are just a sign of pure devastation. And Joel Hagen stands tall in the center of the ring here at Rio 1820. I can't believe it. I thought after that massive superplex to the outside, Joel Hagen would be done for the night. Turns out not only is he not done, he took out every single member of the opposing team. Oh, CJ, the legal man looking for the oh, pinfall. What a surprise. He'll slither his way in and try to capitalize on his... Uh, employees for hard work. Hagen staring down at referee James Austin here. And, uh, I, that's a very, very easy, easy man to intimidate when you're Joel Hagen, because Joel Hagen can just scare the sh living you-know-what out of you. It looks like now they're all lining up. Two and a half wrestlers and Bruno. Oh, wait! Sides! To the power of four. No, 
Nitro. Oh, take oh. that, Hagen. Hagen. Oh, straight, staggering like a drunk man in Northbridge at the moment. Huge boot in the face. Yet he's still on his feet. Somehow. Oh, zoinks. Elevated variation. Oh, Bob and Dan now knock Hagen to the outside. Taking out potentially the most dangerous man of their opposition. As CJL's yelling out to the rest of the cavalcade, I don't think he realises he's a man surrounded. That is not the place you want to be, Chris J. Lazarus. But it's a place the crowd have wanted to see him for quite some time. Wait, is he? This is Tanya business cards. Oh, Bob's been there before. Oh, Bruno. No, thank you very much. Oh, CJO with a slap there. Oh, the oldest trick in the book. From the youngest person on our roster. Stranger things have oh. happened, I'm sure. Oh, Here we wait, go. Wait, wait. Nitro's directing traffic. All four men going, going to the corner. Whatever they're gonna do, this is not looking good for CJL. Could be time for, oh! Lambert to the outside! You've gotta be kidding me! And now, Bobby, Dan, oh, the split splash! And Bruno to cap it off. Redeemer! That's it! The winners of this match by Pinfall, Dan Moll, Bobby Marshall, Jesse Lambert, and Bruno Nitro! What a way to start reawakening 20. The team of two and a half wrestlers and Bruno Nitro get the victory over CJL and his cavalcade of stars. And we're seeing a, a bit of a dance off celebration here, Eric. Jesse Lambert showing the moves at the blue light disco. And uh, Bobby's like, no, I haven't done that since the days of the Paramount, brother. I think I've seen Bobby Marshall dance in my life. And I was at his wedding. <laughs> Oh, here we go! Oh, we've been robbed! A great gift if we've never seen Bobby dance before! You see, it's, it was written in the good book that the Chosen One would lead us. You've shown me something, Edith. You've shown me the truth. I know who the Chosen One is, and it's yours truly. You see, Father Jacobs has a new mission. Father Jacobs has been enlightened, and I promise, I promise to take all my followers to the Promised Land with a luminous society. So if you want me, you know where to find me. Introducing first. At 175 pounds, he is the Chaser Barber Tyler G. Jacobs. Father Tyler Jacobs has a very important match here tonight, but this is a man who is very important to this here event. 
He just touched those three letters in the middle of that canvas, EPW. This is a man that has helped personify those three letters for over 20 years. This man is an EPW original. Two-time EPW champion, four-time tag team champion. He's a hardcore champion and won the Invitational Tournament in 2002. This is a man so synonymous with explosive pro wrestling and I'm so proud to be able to call this match of his 20 years. Eric Mack. I'm proud to be here to witness this man's career and all that he does. But you can't be proud of the man he is right now. So consumed by this light, this message that none of us know anything about because he keeps it all guarded. But now he's decided that after Edith Knight spurned his advance to join this cult, and that's what and it now, is. Introducing his he's now opponent. taking it upon himself to call himself the chosen. Olsen, here comes the one. Practical and tactical, this is Edith Knight! All business for the practical and tactical Edith Knight. Of course, after an unfortunate loss in the Invitational Tournament quarterfinals against Marcus Pitt, Brother Jacobs came out to try and recruit her to this light, but Edith Knight politely declined, and with that, that rejection, Father Jacobs took it upon himself with a dastardly, absolutely dastardly headbutt and attack with that belt from around his waist. That's right, it was a cowardly attack, like I said. A lot of history for Tyler Jacobs and EPW. I can separate the art from the artist, but it was despicable what he did to Edith Knight. It was literally, you're either with me or against me. He banished his former followers, the children, earlier on this year when they uh, didn't get the job done just once. He was just out with them. Yes, I was quite that's surprised. It's not necessarily a great advertisement if you're trying to bring people into this line. Right? Here we go. Edith Knight has been waiting for this since Mighty Encounters. Referee AC Norris gets us underway. Here we go. Tyler Jacobs going straight at it. Edith Knight, beautiful head to takedown. You can see why Father Jacobs wanted her on his team. That's right. Edith Knight's had a... Uh, a, a very good 2021. It's been an interesting one for her, of course. No one will ever forget that massive Claremont street fight against Casey Johns and Evolution in June. Of course, since then, whilst Edith Knight hasn't had some big wins, she's had some massive matchups. Was, uh, of course, up against uh, Davis Storm in July at Hello High Water and lost to Marcus Pitt in October at Mighty Encounters. These are some of the best EPW has to offer, and Edith Knight has stepped to them. And do oh! Speaking of, over goes over the top right to the outside. He did not go for that kick, but uh, Father Jacob showing his wares. Here's another boot though, a little too much uh, taunting of the crowd. And oh! Heads is a takedown off the ring apron to the outside by Edith Knight. Edith Knight gets better and better each time we see her inside an EPW ring. The fans absolutely adore her and rightfully so. Like I said, mixing it up with some of the best in EPW is teaching her so much as she goes. I'm sure she's going to learn more, no doubt, being up against someone, the veteran instincts of Tyler Jacobs. Of course, experience, makes you, experience does make you wise, but Tyler Jacobs now, you can only imagine he's got some trick up, to, trick up his sleeve here. Okay. Oh, it's a better way to hide it in that. Father Jacobs is still negotiating. Is he going to try one last time? Surely Edith Knight's not going to fall for this. Yes. Wary that hip. Oh, there you go. Taste of his own medicine. Constantly learning. Now the splash in the corner. Not only mixing it up with those experiences. Oh, drop kick by Tyler Jacobs. We've seen that a few times in the past 20 years. And oh, look at this. Bludgeoning shots, I've said it many times. He's a jack of all trades and master of them all is Tyler Jacobs. Oh, going for that suplex, but Eden Knight goes behind. Snap there now. And a drop kick right to that shoulder and upper neck region. Perfectly on point. It is Knight. Oh, here we go. Nice transitions here. Oh, rolls through as well. Now, oh, could we go for that $5 pretzel? That submission maneuver. But uh, Father Jake is showing that experience and awareness. Feet on the ropes and must break the hold. It's been a very different story. He's a little closer to the center of the ring. He's like the block in the $5 pretzel. But Tyler Jacobs 
like we said, veteran instincts, great ring awareness. Oh, oh, stop that predicament. Well, stop he did not charging through with just a boot to the face. May have got double the boot there as well for good measure. And now, oh, that chop right across the chest. That peels skin off you, Olsen. Not one eight. Oh, piece of that at all as Tyler Jacobs does it again. You see, Father Jacobs, he talks about the light and he's trying to spread this message of, I guess, goodwill. But there's a darkness inside of Father Jacobs. A darkness we've seen for two decades. Oh, no goodwill with that poke to the eyes. Yeah, hard to see the light with your eyes poked. Jacobs is saying it. Who's smart? Who's smart? That's right. He's showing off his well underhanded tactics, but he's quite proud of them. He spent 20 years sharpening these tools, my friends. Now, Suplex right in the middle of those three letters. EPW into the cover. Two. Oh, just two from referee AC Norris. A little, a little bit of frustration there from Jacobs. They didn't believe. Oh, lovely shots there from Eden. Some forearm shots. Hits the ropes and all oh, goes straight into a big boot to the face. And Jacobs, oh, shrills it with a brain buster right in the center of the ring. Not enough to get it done. Not enough, and you see Jacobs there not taking Edith Knight lightly. Full cover there, putting his entire body weight there. And it wasn't enough, so you get to admire the guts of Edith Knight. Tulloch Jacobs, of course, he has himself a game plan that runs deep. Oh! A little bit of light noise there. Whew. Tyler Jacobs has just been punishing in this matchup. Yeah, I he's showing up his smarts and doing underhanded things, all of his offense has been devastating. Oh, and uh, going to a place he is familiar, I mean, many will call it the shotgun elbow. Is that what he's looking for? It's like he is, but Edith Knight springs through her feet to cut off that high-risk maneuver. And that could have very well been it, but now Edith. Oh! An interesting Hurricane Rana from the top there manages to almost body scissors Father Jacobs down. What leg strength. And the crowd erupts into an Edith chant. This sold out capacity crowd here at the Gate One Theatre. Now exchanging forearms here. And the fans clearly showing the favourite. Night fans in attendance. It's Edith. Oh, springboards into a crossbody. Unfortunately for her, the momentum took her off. It could have been a pinfall, and again. Not wanting to stop. Knight's going to go for it again. Oh! Third time, not the charm for Edith. Went back to the drawing board one too many times as Jacobs had it scouted. Oh, I tell you what, Jones Good was reaching for the microphone. He thought that was it. Not so fast, Jonesy. Big fella. Oh, Tyler Jacobs has taken off his belt. We oh, saw him oh, do oh, this. Oh. Wait, don't go threatening an official. Get oh, yourself wait. a disqualification there. Oh, right in the middle of the ring. Could be getting it. There it is. The Slugged black dollar pretzel right in the center of the ring. And oh, with the belt. Using the belt against him. There's the tap from Father Jacobs. No, no, no. Wait, what? AC Norris isn't calling it because there's a foreign object in play. Oh, I mean. He's not throwing out the match though, is he? Not, not a popular call, but I guess you can't get the assisted victory. And now going for that $5 pretzel again without the belt. Jacobs now has it Edith Knight up. He's going to do here. Oh, Death Valley driver just drills it down with authority. And oh, the stop to go with it right in the center of the ring. He hooks the leg. And gets the job done. He is your winner by pinfall, Father Jacobs. Not a popular call there from referee AC Norris, but ultimately the right one. And after that, it was lights out for Edith Knight. That vicious stomp in the center of the ring. Tyler Jacobs claims that he is the chosen oh, no, wait one. Wait a minute, getting wait, that he's got belt the belt back. again. Surely not. The match is over. You won the damn match. Haven't you Jacobs. done enough damage? Oh, whoa. Edith Knight fighting back, and now she has possession of the belt. Oh! And he lets him have it. And again! 
giving him a taste of his own medicine, and damn it, he deserves it. Oh, and he rolls out there. Isn't it just convenient when the shoe's on the other foot or the belt's in the other hand? Father Jacobs rolls out and takes himself a big old powder. Tower into the perfect pinning position. Two, that's three. Oh, whoa, 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 Eric, look out, look out. Oh, look, that's cutthroat and then some. Cut. Oh, banned from the oh. rumble, steel chair to the back. You think you're pretty cool, huh? You think you're all smart? Taking me from behind with a chair. Show your back, Mark right door. Want something? Come get something. I ain't scared of you. I ain't scared of none. Hardness now has oh, done more up. Oh, oh geez. drills him with a brain buster. Your number one contenders, the BBW Tag Team Titles, are cutthroat and then some. Why wait till reawakening? Get in your little corner. Control your little Mexican lap dog, yeah? Referee! Boys, see it reawakening. This tag team match, set for one ball, is for the UPW Tag Team Championship! Championships. It is Casey Johns and James Hartness, cutthroat and then some. 2021, the first show of this year, we saw this union of these two, and the company has not been the same since. They have left a path of devastation in their wake. Can only imagine what these two will do to finish their first year as a tag team to leave with the EPW Championships around their waist. Yeah, that's it. And now, you see around the uh, neck of James Harness, he was the uh, the showcase wrestler of the year. And uh, it's interesting, they didn't need to earn this title shot because they have that Super 9 tournament that allows them to, you know, have a championship match any time they choose. And yet, they still didn't earn it. I mean, the jury's out, we're pretty sure it was them who attacked Bobby Marshall. So the two-on-one match is how they've earned this ride at reawakening. Would expect nothing left of Cutthroat then some, but here come the champs. The champions, Del Cardo and Zenith. The Zen Cardo experience, and you're gonna love everything about these two. It's not the team we thought we were getting at the beginning of 2021. They were, both had their eyes on the Invitational Tournament, and I guess, Strange things happen when you're going around the EPW Twist because these two have become quite a well-oiled machine and stand not only on top of the guardrail, but the top of the EPW Tag Team Division. That's right. Somewhat of an unlikely team have gone to the very top of the Tag Team Division, impressing us all along the way. The Zenkano Experience. I didn't think they'd last one match together. No, that's it. And now they're lasting as EBW Tag Team Champions. But look, it's one of those things that they've, they've performed so well together. It's 
can you really say they're an unlikely tag team? But an interesting point that James Hartner did bring up in the uh, social media interviews beforehand is this is their first tag team title defense. So they had the match against Plague, which wasn't for the titles. So will there be any sense of, I guess, stage fright in the championship match opportunity here at Reawakening 20? You know what, I'll back him at EMAC. They've been tremendous since getting themselves together on the same page. Introducing first in this match for the EPW Tag Team Titles, the team of Casey Johns, James Hartness, Cockroot, and then some. And now, they are your reigning and defending EPW Tag Team Champions, Zenith Nelcano, the Zenkano Experience! I'm excited about this one, Eric Mack, our first of three championship matchups for Reawakening 20. Fans appear to be behind the Tag Team Champions and it's hard to blame them. I mean, everything that Casey Johns and James Hartness have done so far, they've gone about it in the most cheapest way possible. But there's one thing you can't take away from Johns and Hartness is these two are legitimate best friends. Inside the square circle, outside the square circle. They are with each other almost 24-7, so they know how each other thinks. And that's why they was always on the same page with the DVS plans. Well, speaking of these devious plans, it was back at Ticket to Madness. Oh, wait a minute. They're taking photos with the championship. You haven't earned these yet. The disrespect. Sorry, Don't officer. put the cart before the horse. Uh, it was uh, constant attacks from Cutthroat and then some. At, at Mighty Encounters, they, they took Del Cano out of that number one contendership rumble. And they're going at it straight away here. Not allowing any normality or any order to settle in. Oh, Zed Kano experience with drop kicks in stereo. Like we said, they haven't been tag teaming together long. Oh, oh, oh. oh! Suicide dive through the ropes. In stereo. There you go. Can't say unlikely when they're so in sync. They have been tremendous since getting on the same page as Zenith and Del Cano both go off the top rope and to the outside. These two impress me more and more each and every time we see them wrestle. It's just phenomenal that they got the Tag Team Championships so soon in their, in their tag team career together. Well, look, it's almost unfair when you face Zen Kano because not only do they have a tag team partner on the outside, but the way they use the ring, it's almost like a second tag team partner for them. Oh. Vicious kicks by Zenith as he tags in Del Cano to be the legal man now. Hartness off the ropes. Great tag team offense Whoa. there. Hartness Big didn't boot. see that coming. Only a one count though. Del Cano, if, uh, if you can see his face through that mask, he'd probably be a little bit bewildered from the one count. But, you know, we, we do have a go at Hartness for some of his underhanded tactics. But the guy is tough. And the guy can go in the ring, hence why he was the showcase wrestler of the year. That's right, as we see now. Assist. Oh, how about that? Well, almost like a double twisting pancake. That's not a delicious breakfast at this time of night. It's a great work by the tag team champion Zenith now. Oh, I thought he was going to uh, take a Del Cano there, but Hartness doesn't let it happen. Casey Johns now, the legal competitor. Casey Johns may be the most vicious person in all of EPW. The way they go about their business and that spine buster when it comes out, you can almost feel someone's spine go through their body. You hear no argument from me as Del Cano drop kicks both cutthroat and then some. Going on the fans that get behind them here as well. Del Cano, he really thrives off that positive energy from the great fan base. That he does, but. Oh. Casey Johns thrives off viciousness. There we go, that was a right hand and he just did a 360 Del Cano. Of course, if you've managed to see it, you won't soon forget the Claremont Street fight that Casey Johns had with Ian Knight. It was devastation personified. Quickly passed him down there, looking for the count. Del Cano not looking for a pitfall as he shot counts. Casey Johns into the corner. Johns got the elbow up. Oh! Elevated assistant for um, a little bit of malice there from the tag team champions. Oh, wait a minute. 
Zenith, you never know what these two are going to do. The powerbomb position into the moonsault right across the midsection of Casey Johns and they're in trouble here. Two. Two counts. Johns kicks out, of course. Zenith debuted in EPW back in 2010. He is a four-time EPW Tag Team Champion. This man is a veteran of the sport of professional wrestling. Definitely the uh, most experienced of ooh, everyone in this matchup. Knife edge chopped to the chest of Casey Johns there by Zenith. Slams their head into that turnbuckle. And the thing about Zenith is he's done that with multiple different tag team partners. And this guy can really go in the tag team ranks. And after all these years, still continues to impress time and time again. As unpredictable as ever. Oh, and those strikes just kicked the plugs Ooh. out of Casey Johns' ear. And that destruction was enough for Cliff Maston not to see James Harness on the outside. Ooh. Johns just attacked El Cano, knocked him off the side ring apron. Forget this. being their opponent, you need to have eyes in the back of your head as a referee. Oh, big boot into the arm, into that steel ring post. This is where Cutthroat and then some thrive. And again, you see that, uh, well, that support on the shoulder of Zenith, and that's a bad idea. Oh, as much as you may need it to tell Cutthroat and then some where the weakness lies. John's now with the cover. I mean, obviously, it's Rear Awakening 20 for for Zenith to be wearing that support, there must be some really, really niggling injury there because you don't want to be really... And there we go, see Casey Johns going straight to that shoulder. That's right, you don't want to give a team like Cutthroat and then some a target to aim for. They are doing just that. As James Hartness makes the tag. Now, right on the furthest corner away from his tag team, Barna. And together. Oh, nice double team move there. The double suplex to Zenith. Hardness goes for the cover. Oh, they both love this blunt force trauma that they dish out. They love to just brutalize their competitors. Together they want to tear your soul apart, Eric Mack, and they're going to do that to Zenith if he does not make a tag soon to Del Cano. They will get themselves the victory and become new tag team champions. Zenith's in a world of hurt. That's it for. Casey Johns and James Harness, their favourite horror movies are the ones where the bad guys win. And they're hoping to really a nightmare in Claremont for Zenith and Delta. Doing a good job of keeping Zenith isolated. Oh, what a shot there by Harness. That reverberated that shot to the midsection. And one thing I will say is that Harness is known for running his mouth. This is the quietest I think he's ever been in a matchup in his first year of competition at Gate 1. They're stepping up to this big matchup where they know that there are high stakes. They know that the Tag Team Championships are on the line. An opportunity to win the Tag Team Championships on EPW's biggest show. Oh, what a oh. close line! Especially when you've got nowhere to go, stuck in the corner. Casey Johns is just so unforgiving in their offense. i got to say, I love it. Uh, the only person not loving it right now is Zenith. Maybe Del Carter, but you, got, you can't help oh. but think he's impressed, though. Forearm to the face, it ain't pretty, but it's effective. And there you go, they've taken that support off the shoulder of Zenith. You know, Del Carter rightfully so, trying to get referee Cliff Maston to get them out of the corner. Because they did keep them in the corner there for more than the five count. I know, but Del Carter's doing himself no favours by jumping him and trying to save his, his tag team partner. He keeps getting pushed back into his corner as the team of Cutthroat and then some continue to isolate Zenith. Oh, and now, see that's the thing, even the technical ability has viciousness to it. Look on the eyes of Casey Johns. They're all business tonight. That they are. Zenith, oh, there you go. It's, it's, it's causing him pain to dish out offense. In the ring with Zenith, they'll talk about the strikes of Zenith, then you can really to, uh, immobilize one of the wings there. You're taking out a big strength, one that not many people talk about with Zenith. That's a very good point you make, Eric Mack. Johns, oh, with a neck breaker there. Almost a different angle to it there, more of a swinging neck breaker usually, almost held onto it so the, the, I guess, the force and the impact would go on that bad shoulder. So interesting, unorthodox, but it's done the trick. Delcano getting. The crowd, oh, and to rally behind the outside. Oh. The crowd to rally behind Zenith. 
And Zenith needs that rally because he's in a world of trouble. Del Cano again coming in without an invitation. And Spinebuster, there it is from Casey Johns. This could be it. We may have new tag team champions. Oh, and Del Cano does not let us find out, sensing that that was very close, not taking any chances here at Reawakening 20. As uh, Clint Master clearly shows uh, Ring Bell Mel, that is only two. Do not ring that bell yet. of this one. Oh. Devastation to that already hurting shoulder and arm of Zenit. Must just be excruciating right now. Wise there, great grind in the leg. And now Hartness comes in to just get a free shot at that exposed midsection. They are wrestling an absolutely flawless game plan here, Cutthroat and then some. You can say what you want about how they've earned this title shot. Oh, shoulder breaker. They're showing that they have absolutely every right. Leave here as the champions with this fight. You know with a pin like that though, James Hartness. Yeah, you know, you, it's a commentator's curse. You give them a wrap and they do something like that. Hey, it was a very lackadaisical cover there by Hartness. He put that kick out on himself. I'm here for it if it just has you saying lackadaisical. Oh, this is gross. Uh, we were just talking about how smart their game plan was, how focused they were, their eyes are on the prize, and they're doing absolute crap like that. Stupid is what it is. I spoke earlier about how James Hartness loves talking trash. Oh! Just gets his mouth shut by a foot to the face. Hard to talk trash if your jaws wide shut. Dream Street there, could have got the tag, but no, maybe his pride has been uh, ambushed there. Oh, maybe something else in the offering. There you go, legs taken out from underneath him. Oh, back sent on. And look, I'm with Del Cano here. Like, referee Cliff Mastin has really, this is a big time championship match. And we saw a controversial ending to the Zenkano experience versus Task Force Championship match earlier in the year. With referee Cliff Mastin, he needs to get this match in order because this is now going to well and truly unfair territory. That's right, and of course it is a matchup where the tag team titles hang in the balance. There are high stakes in this matchup. Certainly taking their time picking apart Zenith. And now Zenith. Oh, with a wild flower, he tries to get out. Oh! Zenith's got himself a window here. He needs to make it count. He needs to make a tag. Oh, he's, he is. He's there. No! Hartness shuts that window. And how warm it is tonight. We're not very glad that he shut that window. Let this match breathe, Hartness. Hartness charges in. Oh! Lovely double stomp, elevated. Come on, Zenith, you must make this tag to Del Cano. The tag team titles depend on it. And he makes the tag! That's a spicy tag. Here comes Del Cano, a flurry of offense. Almost like a hockey fight, the way he was throwing those. And he just eggs Hartness to bring it on. Del Cano, oh! Well, John's going in when not invited, gets an uppercut. Oh, inadvertent assist there to Del Cano. How's the boost from Del Cano? The best friends getting well acquainted with each other in that corner. Oh, nicely done. Going to the well too often there, Hartness. Tries to roll out to get some respite. Mastin is he's on the ball, he says that uh, Hartness is not the legal person, so Delcano turns his attention to Casey Johns. Here we go. We have that swing DDT off the ropes, but to no avail. Oh, oh, beautifully done. Oh, well done to get it into the pinning combination. You saw Johns with the experience they have try to roll out of it, but good core strength for Delcano to bring it back to a pinning combination. Beautiful athleticism like we know and love from Del Cano. A lot of Zen Cano experience fans in the audience here tonight. Del Cano though, 
can't let up. We've Wait. seen before in many matchups with Casey Johns. Massive amount of tenacity. Oh, and those elbows, just with the point of the elbow. Goes about it just the, the hardest way possible, Casey. And now Quad's going through the mind here. Delcano joins Casey on the top rope. Well, short lived. I was going to say Delcano going to something high risk, but that's pretty much everything he does. Maybe trying to kick the other plug out of Casey's ear. He's going to go for a superplex, perhaps. No, he's going to. Oh, oh again, Hartness is there. Harness is like someone in Forest Chase protesting the use of a tag rope. Oh, and here comes Casey Johns off the top to Delcano. You might not like the way they go about everything else, but that elbow was a thing of beauty. Casey Johns can capitalize right here. We could see ourselves new tag team champions. What is this? It's not a Sunday stroll, Mastin. Get Hartness out of the ring. Harness is gonna gonna tag himself in. Yeah, that, that that's legally binding. Oh now the tag rope. Okay. Oh uh, yeah. an official tag, Ema. Yeah, proved your point. Yeah, did your research. Thanks, Hartness. Pole driver right in the center of the ring. Oh, this that's could be it. it. One, two, and no! oh, wow! Oh, I thought that was it, Olsen. It's not it all thanks to Zenith. How did Zenith summon the fortitude to not only break up that cover, but with a springboard twisting 450? It was even more of a 450. It's like Tony Hawk invented it. What it was, was Zenith saving his EPW Tag Team Championship. Oh, wow. no, no, no. The double knees could trigger the end here for Cutthroat and then some. Oh, double super kicks to the back of the head of Hartness. And wait, what? What is this? Oh, double burning hammer. That hammer is burnt to a crisp. Oh. James Hartness somehow, someway gets the shoulder up. And look at the look on Zenith's face. He does not believe it. And the fans, you hear the murmurs, the, the hushed conversations going on. They're thinking the same thing the champs are thinking. What is it going to take? Oh, wait. Zenith, uh, previously having had anger issues. Oh, no. This... I mean, could this be the moment we all thought, like, is Zenith going to snap? This is not the time nor the place. What, what, what's Zenith, Zenith doing? Zenith, Zenith's got the Tag Team Championship. He could be walking out as Delcano fights on. Delcano says, what are you doing here? Delcano is trying to save Zenith from himself and he, he doesn't want to look, he doesn't want to retain the, the titles by a disqualification. Oh by, no. I, it is the champion's advantage. That's not how Delcano wants to get this done. Well Zenith is on this constant journey of trying to be a better person. Delcano was trying to help him, but this might spell the downfall. Oh. Electric chair drop! And that could be the execution of the tag team championship reign. Here we go, cut the and up. Two and th no! A stay of execution, perhaps. Just when you thought that was it, Delcano gets the shoulder up. This match is going deep. It's going beyond the ninth inning at this stage. Into that cradle pile driver. No, not quite. Oh, Delcano. Swing DDT there. Use Hartness for a springboard. Oh! And now Hartness using Delcano as a cushion for his feet. Two! Delcano again gets the shoulder up. 
We see the stakes here. We see the Tag Team Championship. Many of the greatest names in EBW history have held these Tag Team titles. We've seen TMDK, The Untouchables. We've seen the Street Gang Hooligans. Oh my goodness, they're laying it all on the line to make sure Fong Zenkano continue in that vein or cut through it and then some get to join that absolute, absolute honor roll of champions. Martin just looks like he might be going for a cradle pile driver off the second rope. If he delivers this, it will surely be all over. Yeah, if you get the match, it could be a lot of time on the sidelines with Del Cano, and he senses that fighting hard. What's he thinking here? Your guess is as good as mine. Zincano experience are a very unpredictable tag team. Great Walker! Speaking of the hooligans, there we go! Who would have thought? Oh, that. We know how much Hartness looks up to the hooligans and... Oh! He was almost looking up at the lights for the three count if it weren't for Casey Johns on the outside. You have got to be kidding me. No, I cannot be kidding this you. This matchup was done. It was done. It was all over but the shouting. Oh, wait a minute. Casey going to the, those supplies under the ring. You never know. Well, we know that Ace Kingston likes to break the ring before reawakening. So I guess uh, you're always going to have a wrench, wrench on hand. Delcano has got to learn quickly to dodge this wrench and Mastin, Mastin stepping in between Thank John Goodness. Yeah, a wrench is just too far here, especially when, oh wait, there's the Tag Team Championship which Zenith lining up Delcano. Oh! oh! Zenith took the bullet for Delcano. Oh, he is, he is absolutely lifeless now, Zenith gets rolled out to the height outside, but Delcano, oh, standing Spanish fly! Johns rolls to the outside, but I think it is Hartness and Delcano, the two legal people in this match. European uppercut by Delcano. Oh, swinging DDT. Hartness. Against his own fortune has fallen right into position for the high flyer, Delcano. Shooting star press! That's it, two and three! He's done it! The tag team champions have retained! That was a war of attrition. Everybody collecting their breath at the moment after that absolute barn burner of a tag team championship match. Here they are, ladies and gentlemen, and still the EPW Tag Team Champions, Zenith Delcano, the Zancano Experience! As they say in the classics, business is about to pick up because this is a singles match set for one ball and it is a semi-final match in Australia's longest running wrestling tournament, the EPW Invitational.
his opponent. said you two are going to sort this out in this matchup and she wants no part of it due to all this infighting and all this silliness going on between the two because the, the, the relationship and the friendship between Slater and Pitt hasn't quite been as it has been all this year. The interesting thing here as these two square up for the first time uh, is that you see them patching a tie. These two are a team. Look at that. They Same team do kick. Not only in a team, they are one of the best teams that this damn country has to offer. Any given time, either of these... Oh, Jamie Slater oh. playing a few mind games here. We, we see on his World Beater Wrestling YouTube show that uh, he is just a master of not only chain wrestling, but also brilliant Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. That is correct. Oh, takes down it there. Straight into a headlock in the rolls. That, uh, that reptile-inspired gator roll, as it were. Done by David Slayman. Marcus Pitt forces him to the corner. What an interesting tale and matchup this is. These two, not only best of friends, not only former tag team champions together, but list of accomplishments that is the envy of any wrestler. We have Slater, who's a former tag champ and EPW champ. We've got Marcus Pitt, of course, who is a uh, former coastal champion, three time tag team champion, five time EP. W champion, and the thing is, they're both former Invitational Tournament winners as well. Slater won it in 2014, and uh, Marcus Pitt won it in 2010. It's interesting, on this side of the bracket, you've got two former Invitational Tournament winners. On the other side of the bracket, two men who've never won the Invitational Tournament, so... All four of them, though, former EPW champions. Oh, well, that's it. That's what it's about here. It's the prestige of the longest-running tournament in Australian pro wrestling. Oh, 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 we got to see it at five! Oh, and that's it. Has it scouted there, Damien Slater? Oh, Marcus Pitt. Oh, and again, Pitt's going for all his trademarks. He went for the German. He went for that snap power slam. But Slater had every one of them scouted as he's going for a single leg crab here. And the interesting thing about Damien Slater in 2021, all of these victories we've been talking about by submission. And uh, is that the strategy, do you think, Olsen, against Marcus Pitt? Because surely the pride of Marcus Pitt, we've seen how proud he is. The pride will it allow him to actually tap out to his tag team partner. Not too sure about that, Eric, but one thing I do know is that the matchup will favour Damien Slater if he can keep it low and to the mat. We know Marcus Pitt's offense. It is high-powered. It is heavy. It is 
very much a power game. If you get Marcus Pitt down to the mat, don't get me wrong, I'm sure he'll hold his own, but he's not going to be out of match. The uh, that tactician that Damien Slater is, that is a realm that he is better than, dare I say, anyone we've seen in explosive pro wrestling before. And that, I think, is the way that Slater needs to dictate this matchup in order to get himself to go into the finals of the Invitational Tournament. Yeah, so it's interesting to see he's going for the shoulder block here, playing into that power game that Marcus Pip is the favourite in. Well, I mean, David Slater is very tough. He's very strong. I mean, look at him. He's in amazing shape. Both of them are. But David Slater can't outmuscle Marcus Pip. No, no, very few can in this very company. Yeah, that's it. And there's uh, oh, wait, now he's allowing Marcus Pip to do it. I mean, these guys are friends as well. That's something that we, we can't take for granted as well. Not only about them knowing each other so well, but there is a... Oh, there we go. Thinking the same thing there. Here we go. Here we go. Oh! Oh! First big German suplex for the night. Marcus Pitts, a man possessed, and Slater gets the hell out of the way. Pretty smart to do so. And that is the proof of the difference in game plans. Marcus Pitts, I mean, fine, him back in. Now, Marcus Pitt is one who will stick and move in terms of the power offense. He'll take the wind out of you, whereas Damien Slater will just rip and tear at ligaments. So, now, it looks like the match is on Marcus Pitt's turn. Of course, I uh, conducted an interview with both of these men. And there you go, much like this, tempers began to flare. Because as much as the spirit of competition and the Invitational Tournament is what this is all about, we've got two friends with a bit of an issue between them. I mean, Marcus Pitt was saying they both haven't lost each. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. what a kick to the midsection. Slater now off the ropes. Oh, into the power slam. There it is. Pitt got him this time. Is that it? Two. Two from referee AC Norris. Not quite enough. And you know what? As devastating as that power slam is, it wasn't going to be enough against the world beater himself. Who knows what we're going to see in this matchup. It's interesting. It's like... It's for any of our uh, viewers here who've uh, got a brother. As you're growing up, you, you know, occasionally you just want to test yourself against your brother and it turns into a skirmish. And then before you know it, it escalates and mum comes in to break it up. And at the moment, Amber's not here. No. So this is just going to keep escalating and escalating. And really, it's going to be interesting to see who stands totally with the table with these two. Well, look, you can, because these are two of the very best this country has to offer. If, oh, 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 Slater, a, a poor tactical decision, not one that you would really associate with Slater, but he, he tried to, uh, you know, have a go at the fans, and it's the opening here for Marcus Pitt, surely not. Slater, of course, landed right on the edge of that side ring apron. He's going to be hurting pretty bad right now. It's interesting, he's got that elbow pad on there, but only on his left arm, and it's something I've ever really noticed about Slater, but maybe is there an underlying injury there as opposed to the right arm? I don't know. Who knows what I do know is that those instincts of Damien Slater are razor sharp. Like I said, he got, he got thrown down to the outside ring in a quite a sickening way. And it did take long for him to snap back into here, back to his game plan. That's it. It's almost like a splash of water in the face, but a very painful one. It sort of woke him up, and he's now going, looks like to the, the head and the neck region there. And of course, the, the finishing manoeuvre for Marcus Pitt is that devastating F5. Oh, there's the neck breaker. If he doesn't have the strength through his neck, and that's an amply muscled neck, well, then he won't be able to finish off later. As he goes, double trouble there. One, two. Two count there, but putting pressure on that neck again. And it's worth a try, of course. Marcus Pitt was saying in the interview that you know, he's been training hard, doing all the right things, but he claims that Damien Slater went to a different gym, claiming he couldn't keep up with Marcus Pitt. I don't know if that's just him uh, having a little fun at the expense of Slater or not. But it is an interesting thing that got brought up, and that's when things began to flare. Yeah, he says that, but I mean, the gym that he goes to now, he is just continuing to petition the BJJ like, techniques. And we, we see him going from strength to strength as he's looking uh, to maybe go surfing instead. Here we go. Oh, he's got the surfboard stretch. Oh, and now with the neck as well. Oh, that's just talking at that neck. Talking at that neck. Marcus Pitt getting stretched in an unnatural way. And is that the rear naked choke? Or is Taking right time to flex and pose as well is the world beater. Marcus Pitt said 
that he knows how this will end if Slater gets the win. He claims that David Slater would lay down for Mikey Nichols should he make it far enough to get himself the uh, the championship matchup that the Invitational Tournament awards him. It was quite a strange thing for Pitt to say. Yeah, there's a lot of assumptions being made there by Marcus Pitt. Uh, maybe adding two and two together and giving five, but uh, it would be an interesting match to see Damien Slater versus Mikey Nichols. But uh, there's a fair few matches for not only Slater, but of course Mikey Nichols to give him gets back. Like Slater said, oh, Marcus Pitt doesn't want to give up the dub too soon. This is a long way between then and now. Oh, and a nice, nice knife edge chop to the chest there by the world beater. It looks like Marcus. Oh, Pitt is going to return the favour to his best friend. He looks down at his own chest and might have been almost like the Incredible Hulk has uh, unleashed a rage within Pitt. Oh, and another sickening knife edge chop there from Marcus Pitt. Like I said, these guys are the best of friends. Not only tag team partners in the ring, but they are best mates outside of the ring. Oh, there you go, Slater gets out of that one. These guys were in the bridal party of each other's weddings even. Like they, they go through thick and thin together. They know each other so well, which makes this all the better contest to call. But the ramifications of what happens after tonight is all the more interesting, Eric. That's it, in the case of best friends, better enemies. Oh, wait, wait, wait. he's calling for it. Oh, I thought he was going to go for the Slatality. Oh, rolls through, though. That's the uh, experience. Oh, neck crank. Again, focusing that offense on the net of Pitt. And this is more than a coincidence at this stage of the match being being. You know David Slater has a game plan. Whatever it is he's targeting. I was going to say about a signature submission move, but he's got about 17 of them. Yeah, he doesn't leave anyone else uh, with any signature signatures to go with. So, uh, But when you're as good at them as Damien Slater is, you can't blame Slater's taunting Marcus Pitt now. Pitt is looking worse for wear. Yeah, uh, AC Norris giving a bit of latitude there, going to check on his well-being first before he went for that, that 10 count. So they have inadvertently given him the assist there. And you see the uh, you see Pip wincing in the aim, which you don't see often. And that's uh, that's Damien Slater, his best friend, knowing the weakness here. In a rear chin lock now to Marcus Pitt, just putting extra pressure, as you said, on that neck that Slater has been targeting so far in this matchup. See with that chin lock as well, that right knee buried deep in that uh, upper back and neck as well. So it's a, you know, a multifaceted approach to the neck. That it is, of course. A lot of this here, Marcus Pitt has been uh, well enthralled into a fluke with Gavin McGavin, which has seen him victorious at each turn. McGavin and, 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 and Marcus Pitt got voted match of the year by the crowd here tonight. Yeah, it was a great match at Evolution. And uh, as you say, Marcus Pitt, Got the best of Damien's, uh, not Damien's late, Gavin McGavin, but uh, as a result of that, Gavin McGavin can't even challenge Marcus Pitt anymore. Oh! And now the ring post is taking it to challenge Marcus Pitt. It's, oh, wow. Marcus Pitt hit that ring post with an amazing oh, velocity. Oh, no. Fatality position. And Pitt, out of necessity, just throwing that right arm. Loving blows. Pitt just not look fully with it. You can tell. He was the using punishment's taking his toll. Yeah, he was almost using that rope to actually keep himself up. And again, you get neck issues and uh, it takes away the your you stance and you well. Oh this. my goodness, we've seen this before, Eric Mack. Things not looking good for Slater. Oh! German suplex over the rope! And to the inside right in the middle of the ring. He's going to hook the leg now too. And only two. Only two. The strength to deadlift Damien Slater for that German suplex. But one thing you'll notice here, Olsen, is he couldn't get the full hook of the leg. He only got one of them as well. you got to think that if he had the wherewithal to be able to do a full cover, that may have been it. Crowd Channing, this is awesome, and I don't think you'll find anyone to disagree because I sure as hell wouldn't. We've got Marcus Pitt now up against Damien Slater. Main event, dare I say, anywhere around the world, these two are world-class athletes and world-class pro wrestlers. It looks like Pitt might be going for a superplex off the top. 
not sure how wise that is. That's going to put a lot of torque and pressure on his own back and neck. But uh, I guess at this stage, you've got to go for that big shot. You've got, to, you've got to try and belt it out of the park. Oh, look at that. He's locked up the arm with a Kimura. Kimura there on the rope there. Oh. Slater is like a surgeon when he wrestles in this ring. Oh! Sunset flip off the ropes. Pitt goes down. Slater's lining him up now. What on earth is he going to do? Oh, the untouchable symbol. Oh! Wow! Oh, that was close. Oh, Slater's going for a cross arm breaker now. Not wasting a single second after that near fall. Smart work. Damien Slater is a genius of professional wrestling, my friends. And he does not even give Pitt a chance to have that sigh of relief that he kicked out. But Pitt now turning the tables, putting the leverage on Slater, who gets his right arm up. And now into a, is that a triangle? That's a triangle choke, yes it is, with some downward elbow blows to the head. You won't find them in mixed martial arts, but you'll find it right here in EPW. Again, going with the double bicep pose, trying to add insult to injury, as Pitt is almost inadvertently summoning the crowd support. Who would have thought that for Marcus Pitt? I didn't think the crowd liked either competitor, but damn it, they respect good pro wrestling here in Perth. Uh-oh, Slater's going for a ride. Oh, sit down, power bomb. Oh, for a count of two. Thought it was a case of sit down and shut up. That was the end of the Invitational Tournament for you, Damien Slater, but not quite. Slater's showing great resiliency there. David Slater at Evolution had that amazing submission match with the Don Michael Morleone. Also, like we said, he defeated Julian Ward at Hell or High Water. I think one of the only losses that Ward has had for this year. Both men have had a fairy tale of a 2021. Unfortunately for these two men, as you said earlier on, also one of them is going to leave the year with a blemish. And the thing is, the Invitational Tournament does not wrap up tonight. No. This is just the semi-finals. Whoever of these two wins goes on to the grand final of the longest running pro wrestling tournament in all of Australian wrestling with a history as illustrious as explosive pro wrestling itself. Well, the way these two are hitting each other, I think they'll be very thankful it's not tonight. Oh, oh a big oh. drop. That is going to hurt. Oh, wow, just spots away the kick. And yes, a forearm struck. These guys know each other so damn well. Marcus Pitt swung for the oh, fences. Little eat to feet there, a little nod to Amber. And now is that, yeah, it's uh, got the leg lock in. Got those arms around the ankle and the heel. And more importantly, it is right in the very center of the ring. But look at the strength of Pitt, just standing, standing his way out of it. The power game definitely favors Marcus Pitt. Both got legs like tree trunks, these two men. Not an inch of fat on these two supreme athletes here in EPW. They are as good as it gets, as good as this great company has seen. Oh, German suplex! And unfortunately for Slater, oh, oh super kick! Right on the dial, almost on instinct. I it's thought it was to his detriment that he stood up, but I, I, as you said, the instinct kicked in for the world beater. I thought he was running on fumes, but there you go, last ditch effort finds its mark. Might have been running on fumes. That might have been the very last bit of gas in that tank. Both men are down as the referee starts the standing 10 count. Hopefully we don't see a, uh, a no contest. That would then make McGavin versus Morleonia a final match by default? Yeah, I think so. I'm not quite sure how Invitational Tournament rules work, but you're, you're probably right there. He's nine.
Oh, Pitt just throws Slater over the guardrail to the outside. Is he going to try and win by counter? I don't know what he's thinking. I don't think his faculties are completely with him because he's walking in the complete opposite direction to... Oh, no. Eric Mack. Marcus Pitts building up ahead of steam. Let's go up and over the guardrails! But Slater had him scouted. Again, these two know each other so damn well. Had him scouted, caught more guardrail than Slater. And uh, going for that high risk, maybe buoyed on by this fan support he doesn't usually get. And all of a sudden, Slater has got him in the prime position. And that could bring about this lethality. Slater's got him lined up. Dodges the super kick. Another German oh. suplex just dumps the world beater down hard at the back of his neck. Oh, massive lariat! This is unbelievable. Both men just throwing everything into F5 position. You're going to see it. We do F5 by Marcus Pitt. Is he going to advance? He does! Amazing he match up. up by Penfold and moving on to the final of the Invitational Tournament, Marcus Pete. What an absolutely sensational display of top shelf professional wrestling. Damien Slater and Marcus Pitt went at it, but Marcus Pitt got himself the victory and he will advance. Now this is a triple threat match set for one fall and it is for the EPW Postal Championship. At this time, please welcome to the ring the rocker on the roof, Troy Nabovan. It's time for the Coastal Championship matchup as Taylor King getting an amazing entrance. That right there, my friends, is the rocker on the roof, Troy Nabavan. Now, for those of you who don't know, he is the man that performs on top of the stadium at every Fremantle Dockers home game. As a proud, loyal and passionate Fremantle member myself, I am loving this, Eric Mack. Oh, Olsen, you cannot be contained and you know what, let's dive right into this because Taylor King, he is repping, repping Fremantle proud. The football team, the town, the cappuccino strip. Taylor King is Fremantle and it would be almost too fitting for this man to represent the coast as a coastal champion. You make a great point there, Eric Mack. Of course, this is a triple threat matchup. High stakes as always. Here at Reawakening. And damn it, Taylor King is ready. Take a look at that man. He has never been in better shape. He has never been more ready than he is right now. The 
biggest show ever in EPW history. And Taylor King has made sure he is ready. He's here. And in his mind, he's not leaving here without a Coastal title. A rocker on the roof here at Rear Wiggity 20. I love it. Good luck following that, pals. I tell you what, you're gonna follow up the great sounds of the rock on the roof. Black Sabbath, not too bad. Yeah, and uh, accompanying that music is none other than Kyle Steria. The current Invitational Tournament winner and a juggernaut with a ton of momentum in 2021. We saw him take Mikey Nichols within a one count of the EPW Championship. So he's been one who's been wanting to call out the Coastal Champion Aaron Hall, confronting the man who seems to be ducking the big challenges. Kyle Steria is ready to leave Reawakening 20 with an EPW title. No doubt about that. Kyle Steria has been an explosive pro wrestling for many, many years. A former tag team champion, former EPW champion as well. One title he's never held is the Coastal Championship. And tonight could be his night. Yeah, in a match like a triple threat, the juggernaut power of Kyle Steria could be the shock and awe tactic that would do the trick. But if either man wants that Coastal Championship, this is the man who currently holds the gold and has the champion's advantage. I'm not too sure that's the case though, Mean Dean. In a triple threat match where anything goes, he could lose the EPW Coastal Championship without even being pinned. That is a very good call, Eric Mack. And I guess Aaron Hawke's going to need his wits about him regardless. You'll also have to keep in mind that he's just so despicable. Both other competitors are going to want to kick his ass. Oh, look at that obnoxious face of Aaron Hawke. And you know what, with no disrespect to the uh, the competitors he's faced since winning the Coastal Championship. Like got... Jesse Lambert and two trainees? Yeah, exactly right. You know what, he's been dodging challenges and this is two of the biggest challenges all localized in the entirety of this building right here, right now. Of course, Aaron Hawke is a former four-time EPW Tag Team Champion. This is his first title run of the uh, in the singles division with the Coastal Championship. He won it back in April at Collision Course. How did he get that title? He defeated only Davis Storm. So whilst we make light of some of his defenses, he defeated one of the very best to get that championship around his waist. Yeah, it certainly wasn't man alone though. It wasn't the most honorable of victories, but he doesn't say that in the record books. No, it and does you're not. right, holds that victory over the legendary Davis Storm. And as of right now, holds up that Coastal Championship high. about Aaron Hawke is he's so obnoxious he should be ready to fight now but he is milking every bit of this entrance right now and rubbing it in the noses of these gate one theater folk he sure is Introducing first, in this triple threat match for the EPW Coastal Championship, at 225 pounds, he is a former EPW Tag Team Champion, Dub Machine, Hula P. And he weighed in today 
Adam Mean, lean, buff, cut, chiseled and jacked, 227 pounds. He's a former EPW champion, Kyle Sturia. And now, at 216 pounds, a former EPW Tag Team Champion, and your reigning, defending EPW Coastal Champion, Aaron Hawk! Fans certainly are not hiding their displeasure for the Coastal Champion. Yeah, not a lot of love for Aaron Hawk here tonight, I can't say I'm surprised. And there it is, referee Matthew Clark holding it up high. Okay, chant of Taylor erupts through the crowd. Sports people don't usually like having their first name chanted at them, but King seems to be reveling in this support. And we are underway. This triple threat matchup, Carl Steria and Taylor King up against the current coastal champion, Aaron Hawk. And look at him. Aaron Hawk has just figured that out. Just say, he's, he's trying to talk his way out of it already. He's calling time even though it's just bloody started. Yeah, there's no timeouts left there, pal. Oh, okay. We saw this at Mighty Encounters. These two men, Taylor King and Cole Steria, and Aaron Hawk. Look at Aaron Hawk just sliding away, smiling all the way. Yeah, but as I said to you during the entrances, that uh, these two men could pin each other and walk away the Coastal Championship, so I wouldn't walk too far away there, Aaron Hawk. That is true, but they are both two big weapons that aren't going to want to take a back seat at any time. Oh, scary. It hits you. It's almost like being hit by a semi truck. You wouldn't want to be in the position of Taylor King right now. Oh, 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 schoolboy! Oh. Two! Oh, ho, ho. And look, he just runs straight back outside. I mean, it's safe to say no one likes Aaron Hawke, ever. Like in the documented, recorded human history. Yeah, but Taylor King and Carl Sterra, they don't like each other either. It's not that they're bitter rivals, it's just they both want the Coastal Championship. There's no love between them. No, absolutely, and as well as it should. Dude, that was a nice sunset flip over the top rope there by Hawke. I'll give him credit where it is due. As well as he's really good at being an asshole. <laughs> well, in Coastal Championship, one of the most prestigious championships, the lineage itself. You look at some of the former champions. Oh, the agility of Kyle Steria on display for all to marvel. Oh, we've seen this before, Eric Math. Taylor King goes up and over! He is pumped. Firmly got the support here of the fans in attendance and maybe getting caught up in that because at this very moment, Carl Steria going to the top. He's not afraid to fly. We've seen him do it before as Carl Steria no! salt off the top rope to the outside. And that is a very large man to fly as smooth as he does. I was just about to say, Olsen, you see a guy half pile size do that and it's amazing. Just incredible, Carl Steria can move like that. And then following it up. Oh. Oh. Must feel good to do that to Aaron Hawk. I, you know what, I would never go close enough to Aaron Hawk to do that, so we're just going to have to take Carl's word for it. That's right, we live vicariously all through him, as now he's going to dish out some of that stuff to, oh, to Taylor King, the dub machine, who's all fired up here tonight. Who can blame him getting the rocker on the roof to do his introduction? Carl Stereo testing out that chest to Taylor King and you know you alluded to it Taylor's got himself in the best shape of his career for this opportunity. He looks incredible Eric. He's taking this very seriously. Oh my goodness. Oh look at the strength from Kyle. Oh Taylor King lucky to get out of that one. Yeah Taylor King did not want to be in there any longer than he had to. And he is just battling. Yeah, fighting. That, is, that, that stage right there is made of solid concrete. It's not a wooden stage. It is concrete and there is no give at all. Oh, and then have some steel for your troubles too, Taylor. Oof. Using all of the facilities here. And now, oh! 
suplex from the outside to the inside. Kyle Steria does such amazing things. It never ceases to amaze me, Eric. He does stuff you think, oh, oh, you'd only see in a video game. And right now he's thinking, oh, wouldn't it be, this be much better if I was in a video game? Because he wouldn't catch a guardrail to the face as Aaron Hoare circling, sensing the opportunity. Now, Aaron Hoare seizing that opportunity that Kyle Sterrier allowed him. It'd be a great time to actually try and get a pinball here with Cole on the outside. You've got to have to the smarts of Aaron Hoare. He's doing the smart thing here. He's, he's avoiding all confrontations and jumping in when the moment presents itself so he can retain his title, if he can, with the most minimal effort. Yeah, he's passive-aggressive, almost like a vague book status. It just must frustrate the other competitors so much more. <laughs> You're not wrong, but Taylor King gets to the outside. Oh, pump the brakes. Oh, hey. There you go. Now he's getting his fair share of the punishment. And now, going back and forth like a rock'em sock'em. Oh! Neck breaker DDT combination. Aaron Hawke very proud of his handiwork. Yeah, Black Friday was yesterday, but Aaron Hawke just scored him a two for one deal. As he just kicks out, staring to the outside, going to capitalize yet again. There we go, going for that pinball where the other man is too incapacitated to be able to break up the count. But Taylor King showing that even with Stereo on the outside, it wasn't enough to put him away. Aaron Hawke's been at this for a very long time. He's been an explosive progressing for many, many years of this 20-year history this great company has. Yeah, and he's picked up a lot of tricks along the way. Yeah, you might not like his attitude, but he's an absolute gun. He's done it almost all of it. Hawks telling Taylor that he does not have what it takes in his uh, post-match interview at Mighty Encounters. He called Kyle a has-been and Taylor King and never was. Yeah, I'm not sure how he came to that conclusion. It was Taylor King and Jack Edwards of the Task Force that actually dethroned Plague from the EBW Tag Team Championship. So Taylor King knows what to do in a championship match against Aaron Hawke. Right now he's going again. Breaks on it. Swing and a miss. Off the ropes now. Oh, get some air. Getting more air than tourists can get into WA at the Wait. moment. Oh, trying to go for that moon. So he didn't catch all of it that he wanted to, but still enough to get a two count. Maybe if he'd been able to get that full rotation, would have been the three. But what that has done, yeah, it's allowed Kyle to come back through the back door, so to speak. Taylor, off the ropes. Taylor's just throwing everything he had at Kyle, could not knock him off his feet. Stereo reverses the Irish whip, charges in now. It's thrown to the outside ring apron. Normally you'd be happy to have Kyle on the outside, but he does some crazy things on the apron. Oh, that's more orthodox, getting lower than the basic bridge there. Oh, poke to the eyes. He attempted a high five. Just feeling the moment, I guess. Yeah, no, not quite. What is now Aaron Hall thinking? Oh, there is a piece of it. Oh, yeah. Kyle's not wanting Hawk to stick around to find out. It's, uh, oh, he's caught his legs there on the top there. Very much in the proverbial tree of woe. Steria now. Oh, with a double stomp. Right to the sternum. And what was impressive there from Kai was he was holding on to Aaron Hawke, so he wasn't just hanging there and falling down. So he actually made sure that Hawke stayed in position there. Very smart work from Kai. Maximizing the impact is what he did. And wait a minute. It's a coastal is match. Gonna do it. Goes oh. coast to coast. And could it be coast to coastal championship for Carl Steria? We're about to find out. He needs to capitalize on this good stuff. Wait, no. Taylor King's made his way up. Rolls back in. 
Oh, Steri now goes behind. What's he going to do? Oh, reverse exploder to Taylor King. King is rocked in that corner right now. Aaron Hawks on the outside. Kyle Steria needs to make this count right now as he has this advantage. He's going to purge him up on that top rope. Maybe a superplex could be in the future of Taylor King. Here we go. He's got him. Oh, he's fighting out. Steria is down. Taylor King, though. Slowly but surely making his way up to that top rope, but Aaron Hawk. Oh, oh here's a go. fox. Size this before. Oh, swinging neck breaker from the top rope. Just like that. And the way that Taylor King just folded up was disgusting to watch. Oh, up on his feet now is Kyle Steria and Aaron Hawk. Yeah, won't want to know whose hands those are on you. Kyle Steria is like a cyborg. You just cannot keep him down. He just gets up and keeps on going. He's like the Terminator. As the crowd is chanting Taylor, they are so behind Taylor King here at the packed out, sold out Gate 1 Theatre at Claremont Showgrounds. And here we go now, Taylor King's back in this one. He's on his feet. Steria dishing out some right hands as well. I don't know what it's going to take or where this action needs to be for any one of these three to score themselves a pinfall in this matchup. We could be here a while, but these guys are not letting up for one second in this matchup. That's it, and it's almost at that stage now also where you hit a move, you gotta go for the pin. It's scramble rules, so to speak. Oh, last right off the top by Taylor King. He's hooking the leg. The boss man bomb could be it. Oh, just two, just two, and it was a second. Less than that away from being the Coastal Champion. So close. So very close to Aaron Hawk to losing his Coastal Championship. Oh, Taylor gets rolled oh, up. And he, went up. And he did it! What? What? Aaron Hawk stole it! Just like that, Eric! Can you believe it? That is just the peril of a triple threat match, but... He is your winner by pinfall and still the PW Coastal Champion. I didn't think it was possible that Aaron Hawk has not only retained Aaron his Coastal Championship, Hawk. but he's managed to leave here even more hated than when he originally arrived. Your first semi-final in the Invitational Tournament. It will be the Don Michael Morleone. After Mighty Encounters, the crowd reaction was really threw me off. I wasn't expecting it. Obviously, Gavin McGavin has changed his stripes from when I faced him. He was always the kind of guy that would take any shortcut, any cheating method he could to get the job done. I've got a cop to that. Back when we went back and forth and traded the EPW Championship, I was, I was beating my, my one and only goal was to win at all costs, and there are a million different horrible things I did, a lot of them to Don. And it took a long time to shape those habits, and I'm trying, I'm trying now to be, to be the real wrestler. So Don, I don't know if Gavin McGavin, playing it right down the line, can get the best. But I know that reawakening 20 can get the very best. And now, this singles match set for one fall is a semi-final match in Australia's longest running wrestling tournament, the APW Invitational.
at 155 pounds, he is the real wrestler, Gavin McGavin! He is the real wrestler, Gavin McGavin. He's a one-time EBW champion, a two-time tag team champion, and the first ever Coastal champion. His goal is to be a triple-double champion, and you know he also wants to win the Invitational Tournament to add it to his list of accomplishments. He left the Fan Voted Awards with two awards. He was voted Wrestler of the Year, as well as a participant in the Match of the Year. And there he is with many an adoring fan at ringside. And that's the thing that the Don referenced in that interview with you. is like, the last time these guys fought, Gavin McGavin was almost the Aaron Hawke. He was the most hated person in all of EPW, taking any shortcut to hold on to that EPW championship. But this is a different Gavin McGavin. This is a Gavin McGavin who took those words to heart from legend Davis Storm, saying, you know what? You are the heart and soul of EPW because of the way you go things uh, go about things. So he's wanting to prove himself and establish his legacy as one of the best to ever do it inside the squared circle. Introducing his opponent. At 230 pounds, hailing from straight out of Midland, the Don Michael Moyne! Here he is, the fire-breathing dragon himself, the Don Michael Morleone, two-time EPW champion, and uh, he won one of those by defeating the man in the ring at the moment. And uh, it seems like up until this point, every time it's been one-on-one, -on -one, every time it's been a fair fight, Gavin McGavin can't get the best of the Don. That's right. Well, a little bit of a history lesson here. Eric Mack, it was hella high water 2018 where the Don defended his EPW Championship against Gavin McGavin. He retained at Vendetta of 2018, that same year. McGavin defeated Don and won the EPW Championship. But then the following year, Gold Rush 2019, the Don won that title back. There's been a lot of back and forth between these two great wrestlers. And then at one of our, uh, our special events down the south of Western Australia in Bunbury, uh, we had McGavin try to get that title back off the Don and he was unsuccessful so more often than not when these two have faced each other the Don has gotten the better of the two. That's it EPW charity bash that was and the Don offered no charity and certainly won't offer any charity tonight because this is for a spot in the EPW Invitational Tournament Final and waiting for the winner of this match of course Marcus Pitt as we saw earlier tonight. <laughs> what a matchup that was too. I'm sure this one is going to be a belter as well. I'm excited. It is the longest running pro wrestling tournament in all of Australian wrestling. And this is the second semi-final. Interesting to hear this crowd response. I'm not sure if you can pick that up over the audio. That blah, blah, blah is actually half Don, half McGavin chant. So be interesting to see. There we go, right on cue. Two crowd favourites. If this was Australian Idol, it would be very much split, but uh, this is all about what these two can do in the ring. Two greats of explosive pro wrestling, but only one can move forward to the final in the Invitational Tournament. Sounds like half of this crowd is going to go home disappointed. But John is fired up. how these two, they do actually will themselves on the support of the crowd. 
So this is it all about just being a measuring contest on the top ropes there. That's right. Referee James Dawson calls for the bell. It's time to go. McGavin versus Morleone. There you go. There's a chant everyone can get behind. There we go. Unify the nation with that chant. So we've been exhausted a lot of energy so far, and these two haven't even locked up yet, Olsen. Oh my goodness! Circling you can each feel this. other. And they lock up collar and elbow tie up. This match, now I can say, is officially underway. Uh, Don getting the best of this exchange early. Every James Austin calling for the clean break. And the Don gives it, just with a little reminder of who took early charge. That's right, I think we're going to have ourselves a bit of a chess match here between these two. The fact they know each other so well and have had so many battles over the year as well. Going to make it all the better for the contest. And the fact that both men want to be back at the top. They're both big. EPW champion before. They both want to be back there so bad. Oh, like, Don great way to do it. Just let it go. No. Yep. As I said, you win the Invitational Tournament. You get yourself a championship matchup of your choosing. And just because Gavin McGavin has turned over a new leaf and is trying to earn the respect of the fans and the rest of the locker room, I just wonder if push comes to shove and a guy that he hasn't been able to beat previously, are we going to see Billy Old McGavin come out? Your guess is as good as mine. to initiate again. Don has the centre of the ring though. And he does work a moment, not good luck, but McGavin has other plans. He slaps on a nice tight side headlock there on the Don. Don trying to work McGavin down, but McGavin knows his holds well. Headlock takedown, keeps it locked in. You'd expect nothing less. Referee James Austin checking that shoulder there as well. Oh, well done from the Don to get out, but falls straight back into the trap. Here we go, here we go. Nice deep arm drag there. Keeps holding on as well. He holds on tight. They're putting more torque on that shoulder and arm. We've said it before, but it seems like some of the opponents are later, the Don Michael Morleone, has been going for that shoulder, going for those arms, knowing that the choke bomb is the most devastating move in his arsenal. That's right. fine and carry take over there by the Don. Oh! <laughs> well, that's what Don thinks of real wrestling. Now, Gavin McGavin hoping to spray some real wrestling all over the place here. Ducks a clothesline going for, oh, I thought it was a crucifix, but instead into a sunset. Roll up, but the Don gets out of that hip. Always electric chair drop position, but again, the roll through. Go, got both legs, just got the two cannon. Oh, that's real wrestling, and that right there is a real right hand. Interesting here from the Don. Look, the Don's about as good a trash talker as anyone, yeah. but the time for George Jack and it has to take a back seat. I gotta tell you, he does have a mean streak. I've once been hit on the head with the old hardcore championship by this man. So he definitely has a mean streak, but Spall is gonna need more of his mean streak there to get out of the crossface. But thankfully, the rope is there for the Don Michael Morleone. Hey, look, if you wanna visit some history and talk about that now defunct hardcore championship, but Gavin had it on more than one occasion. That's it, and a big reawakening match as well. That's right, I believe Luke Bolt is still the hardcore champion. Yeah, somewhere. Anyway, Gavin McGavin, oh! Suicide dive to the outside, gets caught in mid-air by the Don. Not at all what I was expecting. Oh! Slammed on that side ring apron. You know that's gonna hurt and hurt bad. Yeah, on the side, on the hip bone. And now the Don. Oh, look at that slingshot elbow drop, but a little bit too slow there. Gavin McGavin, clutching that back, but now. Shoulder into the midsection, up and over, could be time for a... No, Don holds on. We've seen him do that before. Gavin is just so fast, so slick in his movements. 
this is the thing, when you, you think Gavin McGavin, you, you talk about the real wrestling, you talk about the technical expertise, but with that technical expertise, as you say, one of the most unheralded skills that he has is his speed. The quickness to be able to transition, well now hopefully for him, the quickness to be able to recover from such a devastating strike. Oh yes, and I don't think that Don is done yet by a long shot. Oh no. Oh. And one more time there from a, a vocal minority. We're seeing a lot of Don shirts out in the crowd. Ooh, oh, McGavin. Oh. The Don, oh, look oh. at his face and just walking towards the strikes. Just mean mugs him, smiles in his face. Flips him around and gives him a little bit of a taste of his own medicine. You spoke about uh, Marcus Pitt and Damien Slater could be a main event anywhere in the world. This was a main event anywhere in the world, and it's showing why. Well done there, bringing down the Donna level, and now into almost a lava Istro. Not enough. Just smooth transitions there by McGavin. And now going for the cross arm breaker. We saw that in the other Invitational Tournament, so again, uh, Maybe a little bit of that, anything you can do, I can do better here from the real wrestler. Perhaps. It looks like Don is rolling over, maybe into a pin. Oh. No! He's going for a power bomb and executes it. Oh. Now he's going to go for a pin. McGovern clutches the neck. And, uh, needed to uh, take his hands away from the support on his neck to kick out there. But he's definitely feeling that one. You have a tale of two Invitational Tournament semi-finals here tonight. One power wrestler versus one very technically sound competitor. It's amazing how they both mirror each other almost. Yeah, a little bit disappointing there from the Don. He put a little bit of his body weight on Gavin McGavin, but would have, would have liked to see him go a little bit further down on that one. Really, because he does have the, the size advantage over McGavin. He should be really accentuating that. Oh! Smart work there by McGavin. That spine buster of the Don. He's feared. Oh! Not only feared by all, but just right then felt by McGavin. It's just a little bit of a delayed telecast there. He could only put it off so long there, McGavin. Oh, huge clothesline by the Don. Back elbow strike to back it up. The Don has vicious intent in mind. And almost now, like a bull, preparing to charge at McGavin. But instead, oh, McGavin with a roll-up. You see the intention from McGavin now as he clutches again at that back. He's just trying to get into those pinning combinations and catch the Don unawares. McGavin now, we've seen this before. Follows up the clothesline for the Don. Maybe not giving as much of that as he would have liked to. Suplex there by McGavin. Yeah, he took that from a moment of defense to a moment of offense very quickly. Now a moment of recuperation. Here we go. Oh no, not quite. I spoke about how familiar these two are. Oh wait. Oh, two. Oh, wait a minute. You see that the, the, the turnbuckle cover came off. Yeah, the Don was grabbing hold of it for leverage to try and, uh, try and get out of that German suplex. And the savvy ring general, that is Gavin McGavin. He's noticed that. Well, it's hard not to notice it right in front of his face, but he noticed it before that too. Gavin with that turnbuckle pad now. Well, he's used steel to his advantage against the Don. We've seen the chain, the steel cage, steel chairs, uh, courtesy of a former Gen Zero teammate. So. Um, conflicted here, is he? Throw the hat away. No, McGavin wants a fair fight. Oh, and he gets a fair old clothesline for his troubles. The Don said in our interview that he's not buying this new attitude, and he said that if McGavin's going to play this match up straight, he won't get the best of him. And the Don charges in now. Oh, big clothesline. Reverie James also struggling with that turnbuckle cover. 
as the Don goes to the second rope. Oh! Oh! McGavin scouts that shoulder block and locks in the ankle lock. He has won matches with this ma with this move before. And we've seen Gavin McGavin almost on a tap out streak of his own here. Mm -hmm. McGavin is very proficient with that ankle lock. Many men have tapped the canvas. And the Dawn, I didn't think you could ever see him give up, but against Damien Slade, he did quit in that submission match. So if you've got someone with the technical ability, they can. I don't want to go back to the well, but get the best of the Dawn in the submission hole. Yeah. So things have happened. Eric Mack is with Gavin now. Got to go for the first DDT, perhaps. Perhaps we'll never know as the Dawn. Oh! Just clocks McGavin as he ragdolls over that top rope. Gavin Just knocked McGavin. his jaw into another streak. Yeah, channeling his inner Jim Barney, turning into a slinky. Oh, no. Going to capitalize now whilst McGavin's perched on that top rope. Oh, Gavin McGavin holding on. I don't know if his back could take this superplex. Dear life, because what hangs in the balance is a final spot. Oh, the oh, Invitational Tournament! Dude! Ooh, 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 ooh. James Austin, referee, lets us know that was only two, but damn, it was a close one. Yeah, McGavin sensed that if he went over for that superplex, that it was going to be a world of strife, and like, strife even, and you see just the body position in there to change that, to turn it into that crossbody. But look at the look on Gavin McGavin's face. Oh yeah, he is in a lot of pain. Normally you'd think if this match was going long with Gavin McGavin, that it would be in his favour. But, I mean, he's got the worst of this so far. Yeah, he has. The Don has been incredible. Oh, but he just got himself planted with a DDT. Two count there. But, oh, now going to the centre ring. Student of the game here, looking for the pedigree. And there Nelson. it is! Wow, this is not looking good for the Don right here. Could be it. One, two, and... No, not game over yet for the Don. Somehow, some way, powers out. But uh, by powering out, he put McGavin right to the outside there. Looking, springboard, elbow oh. drop. We know what's next, no! Going for the pin this time, not in that cross face. Hooks both legs. Oh. And we've seen McGavin do that springboard elbow drop into the cross face and just maybe didn't have the strength or the energy to do that, so went straight for the cover. Wasn't enough this time. I don't know what it's going to take for either competitor here. They've laid so much out, but they have to keep on going again. It is the longest running pro wrestling tournament in all of Australian wrestling at all. Both of these men know it. Yeah, at this stage of the match, you're just throwing everything you have straight at the face, at the head, and just trying to get that killer blow. Uppercut there from McGavin now. Oh, he's building up ahead of steam. Oh, shoot, bomb! Gavin's down, but so is Don. Does he have the energy to make a cover? Oh, he's trying to will himself over. If he does, it's gonna be it. There we go. Two and no! <laughs> I thought that was it. Oh. it. Just goes to show you can't rule the Gavin out. Chanting those letters, EPW, and now the Don could be looking to end it with a choke bomb. Gavin wisely gets out of it, ducks the clothesline. Oh, history maker! He's nailed it right in the center One, of the ring. Two and three. No. Ooh. Oh wait, he's going straight to the cross face. There we go. There's a wherewithal. And look at the positioning, Mean Dean. Expertly placed in the middle of the ring is McGavin. Oh, expertly maneuvered there from the Don. McGavin the didn't waste the one second it took for the Don to kick out. 
to yeah. transition into that, but right now, we've seen this before from the Don. Oh, look at so that Death Valley Driver. Though, that's the thing, these guys know each other so well. No pedigree's not going to happen again. That's the line again. Oh, head scissors into the crossface again in the center of the ring. How much punishment is the Don going to be able to take? Oh no, that right hand's coming up. He's shaking. He's about to give it in. Look at the talk. Look at him just wrenching back McGavin. As the crowd chants for Don. The Don, how is he just standing his way out of it? And now he's got McGavin up in the fireman's carry. Rolling Death Valley driver. He's going to go for another one and he nails it. That's got to be it, Olsen. Surely. No. I know it's a cliche and you hear it many times in lengthy matches, but goodness gracious, what is it going to take? Your guess is as good as mine. Both men have laid so much out for the Invitational Tournament. Both men want to go on to the final. Write their name in the history books. And it could just be one more decisive blow that does it. Oh, choke bomb, rolls through. McGavin's got the cover too. And oh my goodness. So close yet again. The Don kicked out though. Oh, oh nice cutter. And he's done it. Gavin McGavin advances to the final of the Invitational Tournament. Here's your winner by pinfall and going on to the final of the Invitational Tournament, wrestler Gavin McGavin! Gavin hits him with a Grand Slam maneuver. Who would have seen that coming? Clearly not the Don because that is all she wrote for the one, two, three, and Gavin McGavin advances to the EBW Invitational Tournament Final. What a matchup we just saw. Longest running and most prestigious tournament in all of Australian wrestling. And that is why. And that just shows exactly what it means, what it means to the competitors at EBW to win that Invitation Tournament. That was just what it took to get into the final. Kevin McGavin asking for a microphone from Jones Good. Something on the mind of Grand Slam Gavin. <sighs> Is it just me? Or is the Don one tough son of a bitch? I deserve to have Don kick my ass. <laughs> to be fair, in the past, yes. Now, uh, um, so that puts me in the final of the Invitational Tournament. And uh, if memory serves me correct, if I'm not too concussed, that means that I'm facing Marcus Pitt. Yeah. Now, Last time I wrestled him, which you guys voted for us to do the match of the year, thank you very much. The stipulation was that if he defeated me, and he did, I would never 
be allowed to face him in one-on-one -on -one competition yet. So where this leaves us, I don't know. What I do know is that over the last 13 years, I've made a lot of history, taken a lot of titles, broken a lot of records, but I have never, ever won the Invitational Tournament Trophy. And I've never even made it to the final. This is the closest I've got. I'm not going to win it. Hey, if I've got to face Marcus Pitt, you never know, but... You know what, no one, screw its stipulation, screw this, never allowed to wrestle ever again. Marcus Pitt, the Invitational Tournament Trophy, is the longest running tournament in the history of Australian pro wrestling. And I'll be damned if it's gonna be decided by forfeit or something like that. We will have this match. I will finally defeat you. I will become the Invitational Tournament Champion. And then, then Marcus Pitt and everyone else who's been hearing me say it for five years, I will become the Triple Double champion! Are we looking at the next winner of the Invitational Tournament? He talks to talk, he walks the walk, he is the real wrestler, Gavin McGavin! bound by the restraints of the world around him. That's the outlaw state of mind. That's the mindset that has put me right back in your face again. Before the world changed, before the road that I was on twisted and turned, I was a man with no grit, no vision. But you should have killed me when you had the chance, Mike, because the road that we are on now, it only leads one place. Mikey, I've been to hell and back to get right where I am now. I've been to hell and back to get what's around your waist. Do you think the Wasteland Warfare scares me? You're a wanted man, Mikey. Dead or alive. The time! 20 main event contested under Wasteland Warfare rules. No disqualification, no count out. Two men enter, one man leaves. This is for the BW Championship. Here comes the number one contender for the EBW Championship. Julian Ward earned that right, outlasting 19 other wrestlers in a ticket to Madness Rumble to earn a third opportunity. And the man at the top of EBW, Mad Mikey Nichols, 
And as we've seen in the video, as we saw at the end of our last show, Julian Ward is ready and is in the best possible position he's ever been to potentially dethrone the madness. In July 2019 at Evolution, Julian Ward was defeated by Mikey Nichols. At Hot Summer's Night, February 2020 for the EBW Championship, he was defeated by Mikey Nichols. Will the third time be a charm? Will this man who's fought so hard to get himself a chance once again be victorious? He's fought all those people to get this opportunity, but at the end of the day, the same man stands on the other side of that ring. He is the undefeated man. Mikey Nichols. So this is the way you and there he is. He means business. He is the undefeated EPW champion. Since returning from the United States, not one single person Australia-wide has been able to get the better of that very man. It's almost as if the closed borders have made this man a dangerous, caged animal. The only place he's been able to unleash the fury, the madness, the rage is here in EPW, and the roster has felt all of that wrath. You want to speak about being uncaged. Anything goes in this matchup, my friends. That's it. Coming off a torn bicep. A torn bicep in his match only, at Ticket to Madness. Only a couple of months ago. And he's come back looking like that. Introducing first, tonight, Skip. he is the challenger at 201 pounds, the outlaw, Julian Ward! And at 228 pounds, he is a two-time former GHC Tag Team Champion, a two-time former EPW Tag Team Champion, and your reigning, defending, two-time EPW Champion, Mad Mikey! Oh, oh, oh Julian Ward! Seizing the opportunity that lays ahead of him, Julian Ward. Probably the smartest or dumbest thing he can do is try and get the jump on Mad Mike and he goes, but we're on the way! The main event of Reawakening 20, I'm damn excited, Emac. Excited is an understatement. Forget the pleasantries, this is all about the EPW Championship and Julian Ward doesn't want to wait another moment. It's anything goes and Julian Ward, I think, went to throw Mikey into the guardrails, but he went over it. This has already brought into the crowd, and the match isn't even two minutes long yet. Well, this is all of Mad Mikey Nichols doing. He's the one who called for Wasteland Warfare rules. No disqualification, no count out, and as Mad Mikey said, two men enter, one man leaves, and the person who leaves holds high the EPW Championship. And what a tale between these two competitors, not only their previous two matchups, but when you think about it, this is Reawakening 20. We're celebrating 20 years of EPW, 20 years of this man's career, because he started this damn company all those years ago. Oh! And it was sold out, this event, but Mad Mikey seemed to find himself a seat. And Julian Ward's letting him have it. Oh, everyone has just made their way out of the danger zone there, leaving that space for those two competitors. And this massive capacity crowd is chanting for Julian Ward. And it's been all Julian Ward so far. That it has. Going under the ring now, like we said, it's anything goes. Oh, hello. He's, he's got a bull rope. That's about as old school country cowboy wrestling as you can get, Emac. A, a bull rope. Oh, you're excited about it, but one person who's not is Mad Mikey Nichols. Oh, swing! Oh! You heard it go off the steel there. And that could have been a very, very short match there if that oh. connected. Ward put the brakes on, managed to fire back at Mikey. Been very impressive, oh. has Ward. Takedown on the outside. And that, oh, a slingshot into that steel post. Julian Ward not letting up here. Wasteland Warfare is in full effect. Julian Ward's had himself a sensational year in 2021. 
only to face defeat by Damien Slater. Otherwise, he's had wins over Kaz Jordan, over uh, James Hartness. He won the Ticket to Madness Rumble and then went on to defeat Davis Storm himself. This is very much clearly home ground advantage for Julian Ward. And he's soaking in. Oh, no. Wait, Mikey Nichols is busted open. Well, that was just his head onto that exposed steel ring post. Didn't That'll that? do it. And now, like, like a shark sensing blood, Julian Ward just goes straight to the forehead. That he is. He's found himself a target on the EPW champion. That's it. You said at the very beginning of this match, it might have been the smartest or the dumbest thing that Julian Ward did to jump Mikey Nichols. At the moment, he's looking like a Mensa graduate. The thing is, many people have tried that tactic before and failed miserably. All it takes for Mikey Nichols to turn things around. It's a very different story. But Julian Ward has capitalised like I don't think we've seen anyone against Mikey Nichols so far since his return from overseas. Yeah, and that's it. You don't want to give him a chance because now as he senses the blood, it might just unleash even more fury. Look at that. Is that? That's a six-pack Olsen. Don't act like you don't know what one of those are. Oh, look, I know well. I just didn't think I'd see one in a, in a, in a matchup. Don't get me wrong, anything goes, but is he going to drink them? It's a hot night. It is a very hot night here at Gate 1 Theatre. Oh, oh, no! And that's why you pay for the premium seats. They're in the splash zone for sure. But Mikey gets the shoulder up. Can of beer to the head, ain't going to get the job done. Or he could be looking to take him out, smash him all over again. Here we go. Dual wielding two beers. I'm not sure it's encouraged drinking on the job, but it might be just fueling Julian Ward right now. A little bit of liquid courage, as they like to call it. Vertical suplex by Julian Ward. Is that the first actual wrestling move we've seen in this matchup so far? Yeah, it may be, but... It's uh, been carnage. It has been carnage. And Jules just uh, hands a beer off to a punter. We have double checked. Guess he's slightly over 18. Yep, he, he, he looks of legal age. Now back to the bull rope. The bull rope. You want to talk old school wrestling. Needs more cowbell, says the crowd. I don't think Mad Mikey wants more cowbell. And he's getting the rope right now. Oh, through the mouth. Mad Mikey Nichols is ble bleeding profusely. Almost a cowboy clutch there. Oh, now just using the sharp oh. edge of that cowbell. Just grinding into the head of Mad Mikey Nichols, just opening that wound even more so. Julian Ward said he didn't fear the Reaper, and he certainly doesn't fear Mikey Nichols, and he's showing it right now. Just absolute devastation. And and Mikey is rocked. He's rocked like we have not seen him be rocked before. I'm, I'm almost shocked and surprised. Wait a minute. More we've, hardware. We've got a trash can, a bin lid, I, I think a cooking tray, a chain. Regular things that you find under a wrestling ring these days. Oh, look out. Oh! oh. Made a mistake bringing the trash can in the ring. Unattended for. Mikey Nichols. And the facial expression of Mad Mikey has changed. A smirk on his face. He's bleeding heavily, but you know there's still some fight left. Oh. No, maybe he's taking pity on Julian Ward? Oh, maybe he's saying he doesn't need it. What, what is he doing now? He's got something else in mind. Oh, a cricket bat! Mad Mikey Nichols has won the toss and elected to bat first. It's not quite time for the T20 season to kick off. Oh! A bloody cricket bat. That's a bat straight to mid on. Oh, now oh, Julian wow. Ward completely blindfolded. Great counter by Julian Ward. He couldn't have even known where he was and he was just throwing his head with reckless abandon. Where is he getting this from? Julian Ward has been a man possessed since before the bell rang. And now the trash can goes on top of Mikey's head. 
Ward's looking for that cricket bat. Wants to, wants to try and hit a six. Oh, there's the pull shot. Oh, the straight bat. Oh, and again. Working his way through the V. My goodness. And now Ward for the cover. Two. Oh, and uh, Mikey not ready to declare yet. Julian Ward. This is another level of Julian Ward, what we are seeing here tonight, my friends, celebrating 20 years of explosive pro wrestling. Julian Ward has taken all the history on board. And we see a steel chain now, and we, we remember when Mad Mikey Nichols turned his back on the fans and rejoined with Team DK, it was a steel chain that he did use to do that, so maybe a taste of his own medicine. That's right, that was at the start of this very year. Oh, oh Ward. Just wrenching on that chain, choking the hell out of Mikey Nichols. Where is this side of Julian Ward come from? Oh. Well, that he, side just met a toolbox. Hit him with a toolbox. Now, a toolbox you would expect to find under a wrestling ring. But points to Mikey Nichols for finding the damn thing. Right you are, Olsen. Oh, hey. And now, oh, I thought the steel chain was going to come into play, but Mikey is, he is, a, he's, I, I can't say the words that, he is Mikey right Nichols now. himself is a weapon. That's it. He just says you ain't what he said. The thing is, Mikey Nichols can use a toolbox. He can use a cricket bat. He can use a trash can. Oh, Mikey Nichols throws those fists, throws those chops, throws those strikes, and his offense. Oh, and he can do devastating oh, things. What's he's he doing? He's reaching for something. A fork. Oh no. Who needs a trash can if you've got a fork hidden in your knee pad? Oh, just stabbed Julian Ward in the head. I do apologize if you're viewing at home and are feeling squeamish. Oh! oh. And there goes referee Matthew Clark. Matthew Clark is out of there and this is completely legal. Damien Slade has made his way to ringside as well. He didn't even need to wait for the ref to fall down because it was Wasteland War there, but... It's he's, anything goes. Anything goes, but Slater has decided he wants a closer look. There's a closer look at that trash can for Julian Ward. We knew Amber wasn't going to be here tonight. I, I, for whatever reason, did not think Damien Slater would come down to make his presence felt. Well, it goes back to what Marcus Pitt was saying in the lead up to the Invitational. He thinks that uh, Damon Slater might be a little bit enamored and just worship the, walk, uh, the, the floor that Mikey Nichols walks on. And Mikey now biting the head of oh. Julian Ward as he gets taunted by Damien Slater. This is the savagery you expected when Mikey brought upon these Wasteland Warfare rules. Okay, referee James Austin is now making oh. his way into the ring, we have ourselves a new official. And you can see the blood on Julian Ward's face there. Just absolutely punctured him with that fork. Oh. Now chopping to the chest. As only he can. Oh my goodness. And you see Mikey Georgiakin with a crowd safety first. He's, he's starting to enjoy this. You know what, Julian Ward after taking those chops is gonna wish he was hit with a cricket bat. We spoke about the early jump of Julian Ward and maybe that was the only chance he had because now Mike's in control and he's got that fork again. Oh my goodness. Oh, just grinding that fork into the open wound of the face of Julian Ward. Both men are a bloody mess and it's all in the name of the Explosive Pro Wrestling Championship. It's in the eyes. Look at the eyes of Mikey Nichols. He's thrown the tools out of the toolbox. And there's a screwdriver. Oh! Just drives it into the head of Julian Ward. And on the outside, you see Slater oscillating between impressed and disgusted. And I think, oh, again! That seems to be the mood here inside the Gate 1 Theatre. Okay, he's got a couple wrenches now. Nope, he's going to just boot him in the face. It must be nice to have that luxury to think that my boot is more powerful than a steel wrench. Wait, what's he got here? He's got himself a bag of something. Oh, you say something, but if we followed enough pro wrestling, 
if that bag opens and we see the disgusting oh wait Shh. there it is thumbtacks oh. hundreds upon hundreds of thumbtacks oh my goodness this is going to change the tables of this matchup in a major way the thumbtacks have been brought into this matchup looking for a suplex here Ward puts the brakes on. And Ward with those traditional wrestling trunks oh. does not have much protection wow. from thumbtacks. How hard were those forearms? Oh. Wait, Ward goes behind, manages to dodge the thumbtacks. Boot up there. In survival mode now, Julian Ward. That is, oh, Damien Slater, get the hell out of there. Oh, Julian Ward got planted into the thumbtacks. Oh. Oh, and Mikey Nichols just chopped those thumbtacks even further into the skin of Julian Ward. Surely we're going to do something about Slater here because that's disgusting. Slater gets involved in it's, our it's Ward. It's legal though, that's the thing. It's legal, it's anything goes. Oh, jeez, oh, just blunt force to the back to the, to the head. head. And what's he got there now? It's a broom. Oh, wow. If it ain't nailed down, Mikey Nichols is looking to use it against Julian Ward. And I wouldn't put it past him to rip up something that's nailed down. Oh, he's sweeping the thumbtacks out of the ring. How thoughtful. What is he, a young boy again? I guess he's inflicted the damage he wanted to do with that. He's thinking about his own safety, I guess. Julian Ward is trying to just... Oh! Oh, Mike Nichols has just grabbed a section of the guardrail. See, I told you it didn't matter if it was nailed down. Wow. This is not good for Julian Ward. What is Mikey thinking? He's perched. That guardrail on the second buckle. Oh! The already busted open head of Julian Ward just got slammed into that guardrail. Nothing fancy about that, just throwing Ward into that exposed steel. And now, oh, wedging the arm in there. Is it? Oh, this could break his arm. This is too far. Oh, oh wait. Oh! oh, Mikey Nichols just pulled himself on that guardrail. Smart thinking, quick thinking by Julian Ward just saved oh. him. Oh, my goodness. That is a cheaper way to get a vasectomy. Oh, look, Mikey Nichols already has himself a, uh, a young child. And this crowd is erupting into a chant of Ward. They are firmly behind the challenger here tonight. Now Ward looking to use that guardrail that Mikey himself brought into the ring. Mikey is well and truly regretting bringing that into the ring at this stage. Ward with the Irish whip. Mike reverses it. Ward puts on the brakes. Oh, leapfrog there. Clever. Oh! Julian Ward got back, body dropped onto that length of guardrail, and it is just bent. Olsen, that solid steel bent in half, and that's only two. It's about as close to a three as you will find. That guardrail bent in half, but the resolve of Julian Ward is far from it. Crowd again, chanting for the challenger. Mikey Nichols though, grabbing that bull rope. Just around the neck. And again, in Wasteland Warfare rules, he can do that as long as he wants. That he can. Referee is only here to count pinfalls. Or see a submission as that cowbell just bounced off the head of Mikey Nichols. And he's rocked. Ward now over the top. Dives to the outside and wipes out the champion. 
And he's checking for thumbtacks in his hair because those thumbtacks are still around. This just shows the lengths of what one person will do to hold up the most prestigious championship in all of Australian pro wrestling. That EPW championship is on the line here. That it is. For 20 years, the very best in this. Oh, oh! I was gonna say the very best. Wait, 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 what's Mikey doing here? Oh, oh wow. Just use referee James Austin as a weapon. Well, he wasn't nailed down. One on oh, the Lariat! A Lariat! There it is! Count it! Keep counting, there's no referee to make it official. As I was saying, for 20 years, the very best in this state, the very best in this country, have fought harder than ever before, all in the name of that explosive pro wrestling championship. And here we see Damien Slater coming in with that kendo stick. Oh! Oh, oh and again. And you remember, it was Julian Ward that turned his back on Team DK and the Untouchables, choosing to take the right path. Oh, and it was against this man, Davis Storm! Storm. Julian Ward chose not to end Davis Storm's career with kendo stick, and now... Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. 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 You've got to be kidding me. And now, Davis Storm... He's handing the kendo stick to Damien Slater. What the hell? No, he's not. He handed it to Julian Ward, who just leveled it over the head of Damien Slater. Unbelievable trick, Damien Slater there. And now Julian Ward could be, oh no, the chain is back. Mikey Nichols with a punch with that chain around his fist. Oh, it just throws it at his face. Okay, referee Matthew Clark is here. We've got referee AC Norris on the outside. James Austin slowly on the outside somewhere. And with hands like these, who needs weapons? Oh said it earlier and it rings true trying to drill those thumbtacks further into his back with that back slap too ridiculous they're gonna be bored under the skin what a main event we are seeing here tonight 20 oh. years of epw 20 years of mikey nichols look like almost spitting blood there julian ward what, what is he doing up on the top rope now? He's going for a massive superplex. And if, if that wasn't devastating enough, still traces of thumbtacks around that ring. This whole, this whole ring, this whole arena has turned into a wasteland. That it has. There is weaponry and debris everywhere. Both men now slowly getting up to their feet. Trading shots, wow. These men are just throwing everything at each other. comes Ward, oh. and there goes Mikey, Spinebuster, and now the diving lariat, count to, a, count to nothing, wasn't even a one. Here. Oh, Mikey Nichols grabbing that EPW championship belt. We've seen him use this to his advantage when it wasn't legal. There he goes. Catch, no. Oh. Catch and release. Oh, there oh. goes Slater. Total weight to the face. Ward Duxon. Oh, gets drilled with the DDT. 
by the EPW champion, but wait, he's wait, back wait. on his feet. Drilled nothing, he is up. The clothesline, oh, oh that's feeling right. for that bicep. The newly, freshly operated on bicep of Mikey Nichols. There you go, he can't quite put the amount of sting on it that he would like. No problems for Ward, there's the Lariat! There's the Lariat! Levels a champion, but will it be enough? Oh! <laughs> oh, I thought that was gonna be it! The crowd can chant three all they want. The referee tells us it was only two. That's it, he didn't hit the mat for that third time. As much as the fans might want to will it into existence, Ward getting him up now, possibly looking for that Bong Valley death. Oh, oh wait. Oh, the shot oh. with the championship. Have another one, Slater. This is it. One, two, and... Still not enough. So many people have tried. So many people have failed to keep Mikey Nichols' shoulders down for the count of three. Julian Ward has not been able to do it twice before. What the hell is it going to take? This third time to be successful. Julian now lining up, going for that lariat. Building up. And again. And again. Oh! Lariat! That's it, that's it! Only two again! How is Mikey kicking out? And now! Bomb Valley death! Julian Ward, the cowboy with the outlaw state of mind, has traveled through the valley and now is your new EPW champion. He is your winner by pinball. And EPW champion. Since returning from the United States, from WWE, every single wrestler in this country has wanted to defeat Mikey Nichols. No one, including Julian Ward prior to tonight, has been able to do that. But tonight, Julian Ward has not only become the man to defeat Mikey Nichols, but also finally become the EPW Champion. He's overcome it all. Overcome the setback of looking to start his life in Canada and see where his wrestling career took him. The pandemic brought him back home and let's just say, probably to where he belongs. Standing in the middle of the ring as EBW champion. 20 years of explosive pro wrestling here. The biggest show of the year, Reawakening 20. What an amazing moment we have all witnessed. Each and every year, history is made on this grand stage. And again tonight, we've witnessed history. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, and new EPW champion, Julian Ward. On behalf of myself, Dean Olsen, and Eric Mack, as all the locker room has emptied to congratulate Julian Ward on doing the unthinkable. We would like to thank you for all your support throughout 2021. Thank you for supporting us over 20 years. Follow EPW Perth on all forms of social media. Thank you for supporting us. And thank you for being a part of Explosive Pro Wrestling. This has been Reawakening 20.